फ्रॉम उत्तराखंड डॉक्टर एस के किंग सिला मनोहरी सीनियर लेक्चरर एट द नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल मेडिसिन इन श्रीलंका प्लीज कम आवर को चेयरपर्सन प्रोफेसर प्रेम प्रकाश जी व्यास डीन रिसर्च डी एस आर आर यू जोधपुर आज के दूसरे दिन के शुभारंभ के लिए मैं मंचासीन अतिथियों से आग्रह करूंगा कि प्लीज भगवान धनवंतरी के समक्ष दीप प्रज्वलन एवं माल्यार्पण कर कार्य के शुभारंभ करें और साथ ही धनवंतरी वंदना के लिए मैं साक्षी भटनागर को आमंत्रित करता हूं बहुत बहुत आभार सर अतिथियों के सम्मान की परंपरा में आई रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर व्यास जी टू वेलकम आवर चेयरपर्सन प्रोफेसर के एस पटेल विदे बुके to welcome our guest of honor guru ji sk khandal ji would like to call upon professor mahesh ji dikshit principal triple m government ayurvedic college udaipur please Welcome our distinguished guest speaker, Professor B M Singh Ji, 
I would like to call Professor Mahendra Ji, Principal PGIA. To welcome our esteemed guest speaker, Professor Raj Gopala S, I would like to call upon Professor Sukla Ji. To welcome our guest speaker, Padma Sri Vaidh Balindu Prakashi, I would like to call Dr. Kishore Lalji Sharma. To welcome Dr. S.K. King Sila Manohari, I would like to call Dr. Sangeeta Indoria. And at last, but not least, I request Dr. Hari Singhal to welcome our co-chairperson, Professor P.P. Vyasji, sir. मैं आज के चेयरपर्सन कल्पना पटेल जी से आग्रह करूंगा कि आज के चेयर की आज की सेशन की अनुमति प्रदान करें थैंक यू मैडम आवर फर्स्ट सेशन टुडे विल बी लेड बाय प्रोफेसर बीएम सिंह जी सर ऑन फ्यूचरिस्टिक नियोनेटल केयर अमेलियन ऑफ एग्जिस्टिंग सिनेरियो प्रोफेसर सिंह इज ए प्रोफेसर एंड हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट आईएमएस बीएचयू विद 33 ईयर overall experience and 30, 30 years research experience. Professor B.M. Singh Ji, Head of Department, Coordinator for Postgraduate Diploma, and uh, he is a prophylactic academic contribution, including five books, two edited books. Singh has been involved in various capacities as being member of expert committees, inspection committees, and selection committees, various public services commission and universities. He played a crucial role in curriculum development and syllabus establishment. Additionally, Dr. Singh actively participated in establishment of NICU Bal Panchikarm unit in SS Hospital BHU. Please welcome, sir, with a round of applause. Thank you. एक बंद कर दें। ओके। थैंक यू, सर। लर्नेड पर्सनालिटी ऑन द डेस प्रोफेसर कल्पना पटेल प्रोफेसर खंडेल जी 
प्रोफेसर राजगोपाल प्रेम प्रकाश व्यास जी डॉक्टर बालिंदु प्रकाश जी एंड मैडम फ्रॉम श्रीलंका एंड अदर लनेट लनेट पर्सनैलिटी एंड डिग्निटीज ऑफ द डैश फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू गिव माई सिंसियर थैंक्स टू द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स एंड ऑर्गेनाइजिंग होल कमेटी इंक्लूडिंग डॉक्टर प्रेम प्रकाश डॉक्टर सिंगल एंड अदर मेम्बर्स एज वेल एज द ऑल द फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे आई विल आई विल पुट सम इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स बिफोर यू दैट मे बी वेरी यूजफुल इन फ्यूचर जस्ट आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द फ्यूचरिस्टिक न्यूनेटल केयर before going to detail uh, just I, i would like to draw your kind attention towards the historical aspect of neontology just i will discuss both the aspect ayurveda and modern what was happened in past just when we see the history of the modern medicines or modern pediatrics then the in a pre nicu era which is up to the 1950s you will get the pr constant budin pr pr uh, constant uh, constant budin he endures mothers about the role of proper nutrition hygiene for their babies ro uh, risk of contaminated cow's milk and the use of breast milk instead of cow's milk and he also uh, uh, explained about the sterilized cow's milk that is uh, that is that may be useful for the baby that was the, that was the concept uh, before the 1950s in a a uh, french obstetrician has also also uh, do something about the uh, neonatal care and uh, he has uh, discuss, he has uh, uh, explained and uh, put some important things about the preterms that produces their own heat that this is the concept In, and he also uh, use the incubators that, that he has told that the incubators help to keep warm and allow them to use their energy for the growth and gaining weight Uh, he also delivered a crude uh, crude uh, isolate uh, which is was which was from the wooden box uh, with a glass lid another uh, trainer and uh, trainers has also worked on uh, work and contributed uh, uh, contributed with this uh, research, this uh, uh, equipment he has reduced the infant mortality up to 28% so that was the important milestone at that time and this was the before the 1950s and uh, for, uh, for in, for during the modern uh, uh, in modern nicu the concept modern nicu was put after the 1950s and uh, it was uh, during the 1950s and 19 between the uh, 1950 and 1970 after the world war 2 hospital uh, creates a special care special care baby unit before that the special care unit was not uh, present especially in european countries and the usa and uh, dr kauni exhibit grew awareness to the incubators he had highlighted the what is the importance of the incubators dr luis gluck uh, gluck which is also known as the father of neonatology and suggested the wash baby had the fewer pathogen result in the low risk of the infections so these are the brief, brief about the uh, an modern nicu till the 1970s in, in uh, after the 1970s the contemporary and uh, contemporary nicu and family involvement uh, was uh, family involvement was done or was, was uh, put Uh, before the public and uh, and, and said that the uh, that that uh, particularly uh, headley's els in 1970 he encouraged the family involvement and the individualized plans for the ba each baby and you know, he allowed the families stay with the children increase the father's roles the father was very important to care of neonates and he encouraged the maternal infant bonding in 1980 uh, kangaroo care work care and uh, ssc is uh, skin uh, skin care uh, and mother child bonding that was also important and they uh, and in 1980 the concept was very popular became very popular in 1990s increases the use of the different technologies uh, technologies and uh, premature inf care of the premature infants uh, became very uh, very uh, judicious and uh, in, during that period the uh, uh, baby of pre premature baby of up to the 23 week that was also survived and approximately uh, that was baby was weight of the baby was the 500 grams 
And uh, this is the this is the continuous growth, uh, improvement in the neonatology uh, in, in Western countries. In 1950, 1960, neonatal physiology research improved the understanding of acute what is the uh, acute birth asphyxia and how we can manage the acute birth asphyxia cases. And period to the 20th century, there are different uh, tools uh, was de uh, were developed. Intergastric oxygen they have tied for the management of the uh, uh, in management of the birth asphyxia respiratory stimulus stimulant that was also used and that was very popular till the 20th century last uh, up to the 20, uh, 1980 or 1990 uh, mid 20th century recognition of established respiration and first unit units uh, advanced with the advancement then prosthetics first unit units and technology support and even care. So this was, that was the development of the neonatology, uh, neonatology and, uh, and what, was the, uh, what was the glory of the Kumar Vritya, particularly related to the neonat neonatology. When we see the Veda, we see the Veda or Vedic period, we just we got the, some references, but the, we are not getting the details about the neonatal, neonatal uh, care. But these are the some references from the Rig Veda. We, have, we got the, uh, ke, de, ke provided the son of the man, comfortable delivery, the description of the comfortable delivery. And we also got the uh, chanting of the mantra be, uh, before offering the breast feeding. In Rig Veda, we got the le offering of the left uh, breast. Uh, there is one uh, hymn which is, which is used. Uh, and after that, the Pascal in Pascal grass, so the, the same was, uh, same was found. And in Ajurveda, chanting for offering breastfeeding, here you will get the mantra, mantra or hymns for the right breast feeding. So the different type of the different type of the mantra was were, were in practice at that time. And uh, Paraskar Grah Sutra, we got the influence of the Sanskara. Uh, in in Bodhayan Grah Sutra, we also got the uh, delivery of the child by the Kukchi pattern. And, uh, and uh, if mother has expired. And uh, death of the newborn due to the Skandha Grah there was also mentioned in the Bodhayan Grah. So you will see the different uh, uh, development of the uh, de development of the neurology or we are, just we can assume that this, that was the period. And even the, in the uh, Vedic period, Vedic period, we are getting the, we are getting that that was the uh, at that time neurotage was also developed but we, we have the very few references now that during in samhita kal we got the details about the uh, about the neurotology so the contribution of five in neurotal care just uh, we just when we see the most of the uh, most of the principles are still in practice because the concept whatever given during the samhita kal still is persisting and we are using definitely the tools are different but but we are getting these principles are very true and still is in still is uh, uh, still is going on. Now the when we see the pran pratyagaman, uh, as we know that they, are, they, they have divided pratyagaman into chest for the chest balaka and a chest balaka, and for the floppy baby or or the or or, or non vigorous baby, vigorous baby. So when uh, the difference we uh, when we see or when we receive the baby, we, we observe either baby is vigorous or not. So thus, in the same way, the, the chirak, in chirak samita you will get the um, uh, you will get the different tools used for the chest baby and the uh, chest baby. And there are methodology definitely tool methodology has been mentioned and the tool were different uh, tools were different at that time but the concept is still uh, still uh, is still in use care of the umbilical cord indication of timing of the umbilical cord cutting methodology prevention and treatment just i will discuss in in, in, in later on uh, in now neonatal bath and feeding just a, a indication of the breastfeeding examination prash uh, use of the prash Prash, now, now the smart prash is very popular, but it is uh, a prash, the reference of the prash is, pre, is present from the Vedic period. Namkan Sanskara, Kumaraga, Rakshakaram, clothes, rearing of the neonate infants, we are getting in Samhita period. Pran Pritagan or neonatal cessation. I will I will just give some important clue about the uh, about the how the uh, how the uh, how the resuscitation is carried out in modern modern medicines and in Ayurveda. Just see that this is the algorithm. You can see here the neonatal resuscitation. You are very very familiar about this in the current in uh, modern medicines. Just the concept. What are we are using presently? The anticipation and preparation, cord management, initial actions, the assessment of heart rate, oxygen therapy, chest compressions, uh, uh, vascular access, medication, volume expansion with the holding and discontinuous cessation, human factors and systems. Human factors is very impo important. That, that, that just type of concept was very popular, in, uh, probably very popular in Samhita Kal and when, the, when we see the reference of the Kumaragar. Now, 
uh, important uh, what this uh, there are few important what uh, important for the registration just be what, what whatever the we are using or whatever the we are getting the development the positive passive entrance remains the main intervention in registration this type of the intervention is is not we have not getting in our ancient uh, ancient or antique literature supplement oxygen prevention of hypothermia important skin to skin care ssc or skin to skin, to skin care in healthy babies it is for as a as a means of promoting Promoting parental bonding, breastfeeding, and normothermia. All these things are also very, very come. Very, uh, they are, uh, these, these things are also considered during the ancient period. I will discuss later on. Rapid and effective response and performance delayed umbilical cord clamping are recommended. Whatever the is, is uh, whatever is present in the in, in antique uh, antique uh, uh, literature, you will see that the same concept is coming out. Just I will discuss in later slides. Now the current practice, some technologies such as anti-tidal carbon dioxide detectors are used and whereas the some icon aspirators are less advocated, this is the current practice. Monitoring uh, strategies is used to support the management such as electrocardiogram and pulse oximeter. These two equipment should be present, uh, present in the labor room or delivery, uh, delivery room for the care of the newborn. This is the recent concept or, or presently is going on in modern medicines. Thermoregulation, Elcor, uh, International Lysen Corps Com uh, Lysen Committee on Resuscitation, they are the recommend warming adjunct. At that time, the, whatever the tools were present, they, they, are, they are also considering the same, uh, also considering the same principle. So, and uh, as per the Elcor recommendation, the warm blankets, plastic wrapping, cap, thermal matters, they are recommended for the care of the uh, temperature or thermal stability. Now, futuristic neurology, amelioration of existing scenario, just I will discuss the, um, in modern. What is the modern medicine is, going, uh, is doing presently, or what are the research are going on? So just uh, uh, numerous quality improvement initiatives has been developed in the uh, NICU setting, that is the pain assessment, reduction of central line associated bloodstream infections, and that is the collapse, and the prevention of sepsis, this is very Important, prevention of necrotizing enterocolitis, hand, hand hygiene, interactions, malnutrition, implant exutivation, BPD, bronchopoint dysplasia, hypothermia, magnetic imaging without sedations, and use of the music therapy. So these are the uh, line, you can say that, these are the main points where the improvement is, is required and, and also going on. So a few practices is also, uh, also in practice uh, in modern medicines. So mother milk, uh, mother milk is very, very important. It is considered the importance of the mother milk and particularly very low birth baby. Benefits of human milk to, belly birth, uh, to very low birth weight baby, which baby who have the weight less than 1,000 grams. And it's just, if, you are, if you are giving mother milk to, the, to such baby, definitely it will reduce the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis and late onset of sepsis and neurodevelopment impairment. And this, this will also prevent, uh, prevent or also helpful to prevent ROP and the lung diseases. Uh, so in, uh, present, in presently, in Western countries, donor, um, donor uh, milk, donor mother milk is preferred for, because the mother, mother milk may not be present or may not be available to the baby. So the donor milk, in Ayurveda, we just we know the dhatri is the preferable, uh, preferable tools for, the, uh, for providing uh, milk to the baby. So, Delayed cord clamping, uh, it is very important. It is also important uh, 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 important point just we should consider. And uh, presently in modern medicines, with recent evidence support the benefits. DCC is recommended for at least 30 seconds for the infant uh, for the less than 34 weeks and the 60 seconds for those more than 34 weeks. And when immediate resuscitation is not required. This is the current, uh, current uh, recommendations. And uh, several studies are underway looking at situation with the cord intact. Now the concept has come that the, the baby, every, each and every baby, particularly the preterm baby, should be wait, uh, wait uh, until the, uh, for a few seconds or for a few, a few seconds or one or minutes uh, and, uh, for, uh, for the revival of the baby. And for that, the play, a platform, resuscitation platform is allowing stabilization with the cord intact. Cord, cord, cord cutting is not mentioned or is not uh, Recommended, and they prepare a platform. Uh, platform, <coughs> sorry, allowing the stabilization of the baby. So the so the it, it, this concept, which is growing, which is growing, and is under the research. The baby, uh, baby should be kept 
uh, kept on a pre-formed pre, pre, uh, pre platform, which is, near, which, which is very near to the mother. Even, even, the, in, even, uh, when, even the surgery, even the LO, uh, LCS is, uh, uh, if you are planning for the LCS. So this, this concept is, uh, is, is very, very near to the Ayurveda. Just say, Pritta Gata Pragata Prana Secha Prakriti Bhutasya Nabi Nalam. They have mentioned the Nabi Nalam cutting should be, should be done after the, uh, after the, after the revival, revival of the baby or, or Pritta Gata Prana. <coughs> and another, another point is the Prakriti Bhutasya. So that the delayed cut cutting is very, very clear and the concept is returning now. Stabilizing preterm infant while umbilical cord intact, animal experiment has shown that differing cord clamping until the ventilation ensues sustain the preload and cardiac output and avoid the large disturbance in systemic cerebral hemodynamics transitions. So clinical efforts are made to stabilize the preterm infant close to the mother while the cord remains intact. So this is the very new, con very new concept and this is the futuristic. Now, <coughs> intelligent use of the parameters in the NISU predictive monitoring <laughs> so this is the intelligent use of the parameters in the NISU. Predictive monitoring it is very, very important. Predictive monitoring, when we just, we get, we got the, we or we collect the data, data like the physiological parameters, heart rate, respiratory rate, and the, all the number of data or a large number of data is collected, then it, then, sorry for that, please. So a large number of data is collected, and then this data, this data is generated. Whatever the data is generated in the NICU with a velocity of hundreds of data points per patient minutes can be used for the predicting monitoring. So, if if baby is which baby will will uh, will, will suffer from uh, will will or will get the sickness that can be predict predict. In, uh, predict so that this uh, this uh, such type of the intelligent use of param different parameters or data collect, collect data that can be used. This is the uh, uh, futuristic uh, futuristic technology which is our, which is in in research. Now the apnea of prematurity. Apnea prematurity often combined with hypoxia and bradycardia. Frequent apneic spells can lead to the serious brain damage and affects the neurodevelopmental outcomes. Automatic vibrotactile uh, stimulation can, uh, can decrease the occurrence or, and duration of the apnea. In apnea, apnea cases, usually man, manual trigger is given to the baby and just to stimulate the respiration. In such, in such, in, in, if automatic vibrotactile stimulation is stimulate stimulant stimulator, if we present, then we can we can we, we can manage the baby without any complications. So this is the next. Next is the oxygen or pulmonary targeting. Preterm infants are frequently exposed to the hypoxemia and the hyper hyper hyperoxemia. So just to prevent this, the titrated uh, presently what we do presently we just titrate manually. If baby is getting hypoxemia, just to increase the oxygen oxygen. Or if a baby is, is if situation is maintained, then we just be uh, tap tapered gradually. So if the automatic regulation of FI2, uh, FI2 is uh, available, then, then there is the, the manual, uh, manual control is, is doesn't required. So this for that in such conditions, is in condition in automatic regulation of FI2 that can reduce the occurrence of the uh, occurrence and duration of the hyperoxemia that is very, very dangerous to the uh, newborn baby or particularly the premature baby. So this may be very useful. This is the future, futuristic technology that that is coming very soon artificial placenta is this, this is the concept which was uh, which which was uh, come or first first was carried out in 1958 and investigate the artificial placenta just to pro provide the gas exchange hemodynamics fluid and electrolyte balance that that can also be maintained by this artificial placenta this is the concept which also considering and research, researches are going on respective functions uh, monitoring rfm that is rfm research respective function monitoring healthcare professionals provide the ppb with the uh, with a mask using the self inflating bags if we, if uh, rfm is uh, rfm we we can, we can uh, control very easily and uh, uncontrolled large vital tidal large large vital tidal that may be harmful to the baby so that so that it can be controlled by this method now the cerebral near infarction spectrometry cnirs this is the 
current uh, current uh, technology which is in which is uh, which which will be present very soon in the for the practice and under this the bedside non-energy neuro monitoring tools it is that it is that can be used for the for enhancing the cell perfusions and uh, particularly this this type of the uh, this type of the technology it can be useful very very useful in case of the hypoxemic encephalopathy so this is the uh, this is the technology which is which is in uh, uh, which is under the research and uh, very soon you will get the get and maybe maybe may, may, may prevent or may monitor uh, HIE cases. Very, very, uh, uh, very uh, intelligently. Now the electrical impedance tomography. This is the ETI, EIT. It has a functional imaging modality that is a safe, non-invasive, and non-predating. Yet this technology was developed in 1980s, and is under the research. And these, these are the, uh, mod, I am talking about the modern aspect. What is the technology or futuristic, uh, futuristic technology for the neonatal care? Now, another the video laryngoscopy, and when video laryngoscopy is a useful at aid and facilities a higher success rate of the first intubation uh, attempt. If, this is the tool which is which is provided for the give for giving uh, training to the new beginners. So that that may be very useful if we are getting the video laryngoscopy. Augmented reality assisted video laryngoscopy is also important, and that can that can be controlled uh, from the remote area too. Now the telemedicine remote counseling is also also a new technology uh, which is all under trial and uh, telemedicine that can enhance the training and can improve the can improve the care of the high risk infants born in the non tertiary centers so the in non tertiary city that you can manage now the eye tracking help in uh, or hsc for the this this eye tracking whatever the whatever the resuscitator is doing that can also be examined either he is either the uh, either that uh, resuscitator or the or the neurologist performing resuscitation adequately or not, that can be that can be assessed just by tracking eyes. So this 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 may be very useful for the future. Now the artificial intelligence in the uh, delivery room. So algorithm uh, algorithm is developed before by after the collecting of the data from from different or after collecting of the data of or different parameters. So that can develop a algorithm or on the basis of that can be uh, that we can uh, record the video and on the basis of that compute that data can can uh, that, uh, that that data will be computed into a computer and after that this may be very useful for the for the uh, for the uh, assessment. Now. Future inventory emulation of the existing scenario. What is the Ayurveda? What is the role of the Ayurveda in the in, in such uh, such uh, technological era? So technological era. So that in, since such what what Ayurveda concept? This will be, as I have told already. The concept of the Ayurveda is very very important, and we can apply. All are the definitely the other all are based on the uh, um, computer based or you can say the data based technology are, de are, are developing, but. Definitely, whatever the whatever the mention in Ayurveda or principles of Ayurveda, that may be very useful. So start with the plant pratyagman immediately. This is this this is the truth, and it is also going on uh, both uh, pathy or both uh, sciences. Uh, Potential of fiber, athas athas se tal washed karne jiva pramajanam or or pratham pramajita asya cha asya sa talu kaam. These two param these two principles are still in practice, and I I think that it is also recommended and will not be deleted in futures. Garbhodak Bhaman, definitely there is some controversy, but as per the Ayurveda, that the cleaning of the uh, stomach wash is required, but as, as the recent current guideline, the stomach wash is not recommended, but, but, but they have mentioned if the baby has a large amount of the amenity food that can be maybe considered, otherwise no need to do this Garbhodak Bhaman or amenity uh, or the stomach wash, so not recommended presently. And, uh, Breathing and insertion, sound stimulus, tactile stimulus, photo stimulus. Presently, in presently, just modern medicines are using two type of the uh, stimuli, the sound stimulus and tactile. That may be useful in the, for the initiation of breathing in the primary uh, apneic state and the secondary secondary, secondary apneic state. The manual, uh, so that the photo stimulus is not considered. So this is the area where the where the Ayurveda can do much more. There are five measures to prevent hypothermia. These are the five prevent five measures that can be that 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 were used at that time to prevent the hypothermia. As we know, the hypothermia is a very dangerous uh, dangerous uh, con uh, conditions. So that that should be prevented. 
Now the umbilical cord care. Umbilical cord care is very, very important. Uh, and uh, the concept, whatever is given in Ayurveda, is now they are going to accept uh, under the futuristic uh, technology. So that uh, they have meant that Prithyagat Pranasya Prakriti Bhutasya. Until unless the baby has, is not stabilized, uh, umbilical cord should not be cut. The, the, the same concept is, is coming back, but they are, they are, they are, they are uh, g collecting data, more data for, uh, for, uh, for the uh, application. But, uh, uh, that, but this, this area is also important for the point of the Ayurveda. Now the neonatal breastfeeding. Mother milk, it is very, very important. I, everyone, everyone know breastfeeding should be given to each and every baby. Mother milk is very uh, important, but Ayurveda say that not all mother milk may be injurious to the to the baby if it is not it is not pure if it is vitiated so that before before giving the mother feeding to the baby we should assess either mother milk is vitiated or non vitiated so breastfeeding as per the guideline of the who you know very well about this early initiation of breastfeeding within one hour of birth exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months except the medicines and drugs medicine drugs or other uh, give nutritionally educated and safe complementary food at the six month. These are the guidelines of the dojo. We always follow and also the I will also follow. This is. Now, now the first feed, Atto Anantam Jatkam Kumar Se Karyam Tadya Madhu Sarpisima. Before giving first feeding, they mentioned the use of the drug. This is the drug. What is the process giving? We are using not as a prelectials, but we are using prelectials just just for giving some uh, some inculcating some in, uh, qualities into the baby. Or and as well as the second point that is important, uh, just to prevent the complications of the of the labor. That can also be prevented by providing pr uh, prash to the baby. So after that, the uh, after that the mother feeding is indicated. Just after that. So, Istanamata Urdu Metin Vidina Dakshana Patu Prasta, this is the methodology. Uh, 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 few drugs are, has also been mentioned, also been mentioned, that also be con may also be considered if baby has got some stress at the time of the birth, um, oxidative stress, then may be considered. I will discuss it later on. Breastfeeding, uh, now the method of breastfeeding, I am not going to discuss here. The, the methodology is given in very detail. This is, the, this is the, and what we should do, and now presently is recommended for each and mother, uh, each, uh, each mother, Upivishnana Senet Samadak Dakshinam Samam Buna Prakchaliyat Parishrabhya, Mantrabhyam Abhimantritam. So these are the two important points which has the very, very big area for the, uh, for the research. So uh, if we are not uh, cleaning um, breast, then what will happen? The, they have mentioned bummy, cast, swasi, that may happen. The baby may enter into the septicemia if, if the breast is not cleaned properly before the feeding. Now the both mantra, mantra is very important. And this may have, nowadays, they have recommended or they are going to recommend uh, music therapy. But mantra is also a type of the music mantra that can be used as a music, but beyond that, that can enhance the different uh, area, brain, uh, different uh, area in the brain that can be very useful for the development, mental development. Now the vicinity of milk, how we can assess the, the milk is visited or not, that is very bad set test you can perform in each, uh, each mother. That can be, just see the vata dosha, you will, you will get here, this is the just, just see the surface of the, when you put the one drop of the uh, milk over, uh, over the surface, just, uh, 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 just still, just a few, sec, few centimeter above the level of the uh, water. Then you will see that there is a floating of the, some uh, part of the float, uh, part of the milk that will be floated. So this is the, this so the vata dosa vishesan. This just can be done at the bedside. Another kafas, you will see here the kafas, kafas, uh, kafas properties in this picture. Another, in this picture you can see the floating tantuvana of absiditi or numajati. Whatever the, these have, they have mentioned, you can see in this picture, just put the one or two drops over the surface of the water, you can see the, you can see the uh, picture, you can see picture, what type of the vishishan is present. If, you, if the mother milk get mixed very easily, then we may consider milk is, uh, milk is uh, pure. Otherwise, we may consider it the visited. So that may re that may require the purification before giving to the baby. So that can prevent the many many diseases in the uh, baby. So this area is 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 an unexplored area in Ayurveda in Ayurveda. So that we can be put before the uh, before the uh, global committee. That may be very useful for prevention of that neonatal diseases. Now the this is also vision milk. Just I am showing the picture. How we can assess or how can we can examine the mother milk? Uh, how the uh, so this is the vision of milk. Now the 
Now, what is going on? Just as we know, the feeding mother of all milk mom to preterm baby and critical Ill, Ill infants, that uh, may provide uh, uh, ballast. So that just I'm not going to discuss. Now, the, another concept, the color is thapna. The humidity is very, very important for the neonatal care. Just, just to maintain the humidity inside the, uh, inside the room or kumaragar or in or nursery, that the color thapna is indicated. So as you know, the color of the, the earthen pot has the pores. So that this type of the humidity, natural control, natural control humidity by uh, humidity, uh, that can be controlled by nature. Just if you are giving, if you are uh, having uh, water inside the uh, in, inside the kalash, so that the humidity can be maintained. As we know, uh, as we know, there are different uh, different microbes which are present in our oropharyngeal uh, cavity as well as the, in our gut uh, gut microbiota. They, they, these are the these are the these are the potentially pathogenic. So you, the, you can say the opportunistic uh, bacteria or, or the pathobionts that may develop if the baby has the low immunity that may develop the disease in the baby. So that such type of the such type of the bacteria that can be can be which are friendly to the uh, baby that can be uh, uh, can be uh, uh, their growth can be enhanced just by provide providing humidity inside the rooms. As we know about this. Uh, we ju uh, just see that this mantra, Apo Om Apo Devisu Jagratha, Devisu Jagratha, Evam Se Suti Kaya, Sa Putri Kayam Jagratha. Whatever the, what we are keeping, or whatever the colors or earthen pot we are keeping uh, at the head end, what will, what, what will, what will it, it will do? It will cause the Apo Devisu Jagratha, Devisu Jagratha. They are causing the development of the, they, they means whatever uh, persons or whatever the microorganism or organism, what, that, who are beneficial to the community, that will, that, that, that is known as the deva. So that they are, they are causing the development of such type of the microbes inside the body, inside the body, in the neonates as well in the sutika, that is the mother. So in both conditions, just the, we, are, we are praying for that. So this is the uh, meaning of this. The law oil application that should be done in yeast and baby it also is recommended. Now, in the modern medicine for science is also recommending, them, but after the stabilization of the baby. So, it, what, what will the effect of the, um, uh, is, what will the effect of uh, bala, uh, yeah, bala oil or other, other type of the oil if you are doing massage? Then it will prevent the uh, hypothermia as well as it also increase the blood circulation in the GIT. So, the both uh, it has the dual action as well as it also maintain the integrity of the, med, uh, of the skin. So, that prevent the entry of the uh, just you can say that it will provide the, it also provide the physical barrier and that enhances the immunity, physical. Now the neonatal bath, neonatal bath is very important. Just there is controversy in modern, still is persisting okay, at what time the neonatal bath should be given. One say that after the one day, two days or some, some person say or some recommendation is coming that uh, it should be given after seven days or when the baby is stabilized. I would clearly mention that until this baby is not stabilized, the pran of the baby is not stabilized that the baby is uh, in neonatal bath as well as the feeding should not be given to the baby. This is a very clear concept and this is, is also acceptable. And that the, by these, by all these, uh, uh, this important uh, delivery room care, we can, we can, we can uh, do well, or we can the, fill the area or lacuna, what we present in uh, modern, uh, modern uh, senses. So that the neonatal mortality and morbidity can be reduced. Sanskar is also very important. It is also part of the neonatal care and it starts from the Jatkarma Sanskara. So jat, just, just you, you know about this, all this, what is the Jatkam Sanskara, Anamika, Swanta Hitaya, Swaprasan is also is very popular nowadays. But what is the indication of the Swanta Swaprasan in the neonates? It is very clearly mentioned. The short person is given just after the feeding, and that 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 enhances the ayu medha, ayu medha janan. So ayu and uh, longe, it enhances the longevity as well as the intellect of the baby. Now th this purpose for this purpose, this short person pras is given to the baby, and uh, this is very very important. Just see the mantra Om Pratyada Dami Maduno Gritasya Ved Savitra Prasuta Magonam. By this, uh, we, when we when we uh, translate this, we got the answer. Just just they have mentioned the what why we are giving. Just we are providing the energy to the baby immediately as well as just just enhance the enhance the uh, enhance the uh, just, uh, just we are providing the energy to the baby as well as we are also nourishing the devta 
Ayushman Gupta of Deptabhi. Whatever the Gupta, Gupta means, which are not visible to the uh, visible to us. Such type of the Depta, like the microbes, which are microbiota is, is growing in our GIT or our body, that can also be enhanced, or that can that their growth should be enhanced. So this is the Jatna Sanskar importance. Now the very recent studies has been carried out. Just see the reference of the Pascal grassroot, you will see here the the purpose of the swan person just to suppress the complication of the prasuti. Presumably, the, whatever the, whatever is, whatever the comp, uh, uh, complication occurred during the delivery, that, that the real complication that can be prevented by giving the swan prasha, not, not the disease that can be prevented. At, at this, when, we are, when we are giving at the time of the jatkam, or under the jatkam, we are giving under the jatkam. So that this is the reference of the Parsha Graha Sutra. Now, the, recently uh, in BHU, one study uh, has been completed and uh, and I am not showing the data here because the, it is under publication. But that has shown it. Uh, antioxidant study shows the swan person has the maximum antioxidant property, followed by the honey and ghee, and then the control group. So this is the uh, this is the because the because the when we give the swan person, it enhances many times, many times of the uh, anti, uh, uh, total antioxidant capacity, as well as it also increase the MDA, uh, decrease the MDA in Swan Prasha. So that, that so, so suggest, it suggests that the antioxidant property of the Swan Prasha, and it is huge. As you know, the uh, free radicals is responsible of uh, complication, responsible for the complication which arises at the time of the uh, birth asphyxia. So that the, uh, theoretical induced disease that can be prevented. So such, so such research is also support the verse which is given in the Pascal Graha Sutra. So but there are many other, uh, other studies which have been carried out in the, uh, in, uh, by the many research scholars, by, uh, by the different uh, research scholars. Just see the published paper, many published paper has been published on the Swan Prasa, and when we'll see the, the and, in, and interpret in, in uh, term of the, uh, in terms of the general you know, justice care or justice supericharya, then you will get the answer. So this is the effect of the mantra. Now the Namkan Sanskara. Namkan Sanskara is also very, very important. I am not going to discuss here, but it is very important just because every, each, each letter is each letter or each, uh, each each letter is very very important and has the specific type of the energy. For example, suppose if uh, you are give, if you just uh, just we are we just we, if we talk about the ushmast varna, ushmast varna means which provide the energy and the only the one letter one letter is sufficient to keep the keep the uh, keep the environment very keep the environment very peaceful. And uh, on another way, just it can enhance the energy inside the if if we. Connect this word or this letter. Share, share. If we connect with the intention, definitely it will. It may induce the energy inside. It may. It may also has the effect on the opponent just to suppress the energy of the other person. So in, when we combine, combine with the intention, the effect has became changed. So in, importance of the Namaskar Sanskar is very, very high. So the another another aspect that can be very useful in the future. That is the examination of the new baby. That which is recommended in the Charak Samhita at the time of the. Uh, on the day of the 10th, uh, 10th day after the birth. So just see the, the, how we can assess the, uh, assess the uh, baby. Uh, and uh, just, 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 just for example, just uh, uh, nails, istira vritta sinigda tamra tunga kurma kara karaja. Just see the umbilicals, which, uh, which type of umbilicals is important. Just see the predictions vritta clockwise, just the clockwise and the anticlockwise. Such type of umbilicals, if it is present, then we may interpret either the baby will survive, how much long the baby may survive, or it may be useful or, or, or praiseworthy or not. Now the dorsa aspect of the feet, just you can see the purva dishta guna pado kurma karo, natyo pichito, natyo pichito. So the, on the basis of that, we can consider, we can see, we can examine the baby at the time of the birth, and, and we can assess the age of the baby. Now, what should we do? There are many things, just I, I have very short time, just I'm, just I'm showing the few important uh, now the conclusion, futuristic neonatology is an era of Ayurveda. Is it true? Yes. How? Use the tools and techniques of the contemporary science to rationalize the national neonatal, to, to rationalize the neonatal care considering the recent advances and principle of Ayurveda. If we are combined these two things, definitely it will be very useful. It can be, it can cause a dramatic change and reduce the 
uh, neutral mortality and morbidity at a very low level, or, or you can uh, maybe, maybe, maybe cause up to the nil. So that, thank you. Thanks to you. Thank you very much, sir. PGI Institute <coughs> College में College Building भरदास भवन में जिन लोगों का parallel session में जो participants हैं या speaker हैं, please आप लोग वहाँ पहुँचें। बाहर की व्यवस्था बाहर auditorium से building से बाहर उपलब्ध है। Thank you. It is with great pleasure. That we introduce our next esteemed guest speaker for today, Professor Raj Gopala S. Panchkarm in Developmental Disorders in Children. It is with great pleasure that we introduce our esteemed guest speaker for today, Raj Gopala S. Dr. Raj Gopala is currently serving as a associate professor and head of department, Aya Delhi. He has been actively involved in teaching and research for over 18 years, contributing significantly to the field of Ayurveda. Dr. Raj Gopala has made remarkable contribution to academic administration, guiding MD and PhD candidates, IPGTRA and Aya Delhi. He has published extensively with numerous papers in peer-reviewed journals, chapters in books, and e-learning modules to his credit. Dr. Raj Gopala has been actively involved in international collaboration, having visited institutions in Australia, Brazil, and Germany. We are privileged to have Dr. Raj Gopala as, as our guest speaker today, and we eagerly look forward to the valuable insights he will share with us. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Raj Gopala S. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, respected uh, Chairperson of the session, uh, Professor Kalpana Patel, Madam, my teacher, respected uh, Shri Krishna Khandel, sir, uh, respected other speakers on the dais, my teachers on the audience, Professor Hashir Kasharmaji, and uh, all senior Kaumar Bhatia teachers, colleagues, and uh, dear students. After a lucid lecture on uh, neonatology and the contribution of Ayurveda, role of Ayurveda, futuristic, uh, futuristic uh, approach through Ayurveda, from uh, Professor B.M. Singh, sir, I'm taking you to another aspect of Ayurveda, that is Panchakarma in pediatric practice, particularly in developmental disorders. Uh, I'll be very crisp in presentation and uh, sharing my or our experiences also along with this. When we talk about neurodevelopment disorders, if you t uh, view the books of Ayurveda, uh, in the initial books, there is no much reference on this direct, indirect, there are a lot of references available. Uh, the later books, of course, Manda Buddhi and other things have come. Bud uh, Buddhi Mandya, Medha Buddhi Vardhaka Gana, such things I have seen. But direct reference or direct inference how to go ahead with that is not given. We have to take help from the contemporary sciences. And as Sushoza uh, has clearly mentioned, Ekam Shastra Madhiyano, Navidya Shastra Nishayam, we have to take the knowledge available from all sources to understand the things. And when it comes to the application part, we can apply through Ayurveda. Uh, particularly, Charaka, in one context, he mentions uh, the diseases are plenty in number. Naming is not important, but understanding is very important. Anukta Vyadhi, how to understand, that is also being given. So all of our, uh, our efforts, starting with my seniors to me and my juniors, we are adopting these techniques like understanding with the present knowledge and interpreting it through Ayurveda. The neural development disorder, if you see, the SM5 criteria says intellectual disability disorders, communication disorders, autism spectrum, it's a spectrum of diseases. If it comes alone like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, neurodevelopmental motor disorders, cognitive issues, specific learning disorders, and the global development delay and the cerebral palsy to some extent. When these diseases are coming alone, or one presentation is there, it appears that it is a bit easy to manage, it is easy to get some good response, but when they come in uh, syndromic presentation or in spectrum presentations, it becomes difficult. Many a times we come across with the, the development disorders associated with certain systemic issues, certain uh, topical or skin issues, then it becomes more cumbersome or more difficult. Uh, it, it is a real challenge to the physician. 5 to 10% of children suffer from the same 
but less than 50 percent of this 5 to 10 percent, they get adequate treatment. When you go to a modern or the conventional medicine for treatment of developmental disorders, they take help of the contemporary sciences. The comprehensive child development concept comes to play here, like uh, physiotherapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, and other things. Nowadays, of course, the role of yoga, yoga practices are also have gained importance in this. Most common uh, neurological spe spectrum, other than epilepsy, is the development disorders. And many a times we come across with these issues along with epilepsy that becomes more difficult to manage and more difficult to get any uh, good or appreciable response. Early management is always, always uh, advised and Ayurveda has a stronghold in this, this particular area, management component of it. If you see the etiological factors, it can be classified into perinatal issues, genetic issues, infections and infection dis in in infestations and environmental factors. In addition to that, uh, ununderstood or what you call as idiopathic, that is also there. The reasons and the percentage of uh, such presentations are all given in the slide. If you see the sampraptya of these diseases, it can be because of bijadushti, it can be because of vata vyadhi associated, it can be unmada apasmara spectrum, it can be to some extent of visha concept also and the krimi concept of ayurveda, the grahabadha, a major issue yet to be properly understood. Uh, these are all the spectrum of uh, samprapti which can be, of course, each presentation has got its own specific sampraptis which can be understood with the help of uh, Charaka's advice again. Karmaja Vyadi Siddhanta or Karmaja Vyadi of uh, Sushruta Samhita, in the context of uh, Kushta, he mentions about Karmaja Vyadi. That also is going hand, 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 hand in hand with this idiopathic in nature. And if you understand vata, importance of vata or vata dosha, either alone or in combination, or sometimes avarna with other doshas, these, these are the things taking place. And when you are selecting drugs or management, uh, procedure-based managements, we have to think on this vata, vata predominant condition, and avarna or associated conditions. Vata paitika or vata kapaja, this, this has to be thought of. Uh, coming to the panchakarma procedures, when we talk of panchakarma, the five major procedures are there along with that purva karma and paschat karma. This again holds a very, very important role in the management. Majority of these developmental disorders, majority of us, we treat with the purva karmas. Many of us do use the pradhana karmas only limited, but purva karmas play a very vital role as a chikitsa bhaga. Snehapana, Shodhananga Snehapana, it is very difficult to practice in this type of children. However, in many conditions we are able to do this, do the Shodhana and followed by then we go for the other procedures. Shamana purpose, Sneha, Sneha application in the form of Abhyanga, yes it is practiced. Abhyanga of Abhyanga Sveda together like Shastika Shalipindo Sveda, yes we do practice this. In the Nadi Sveda, there are varieties of Nadi Sveda, some uh, varieties of Svedas are mentioned, of which Nadi Sveda is the most common one which you use. Bhashpa Sveda, Kshira Dhuma, or medicated Bhashpa Sveda. Of course, this Sveda with simple water and Sveda with the simple steam and Sveda with medicated steam. I have not come across with any specific studies on this. Uh, it is presumed that uh, the medicated uh, liquid-based steaming has got better effect in comparison to the simple steam. In the Sveda again, Pindasveda, we have got varieties of Pindasvedas too. Patra Potal Pindasveda, ya Patra Pindasveda and Shastika Shali Pindasveda, two things we are practicing more commonly. And one more thing is Upanaha. Upanaha Bhedas are there. As, in the, uh, as per the time requirement, this uh, Purva Karmas particularly have taken lot of modifications. You can see the practice of uh, Kerala based Panchakarmas like uh, Talebodhi chill. It is a variety of Sveda or Upanaha Sveda only. Similarly, after Shastika Shalipinda Sveda or otherwise Annalepa. This is also a variety of Sveda only. So this type of modifications have taken place in the Purva Karmas, which has increased the Purva Karma numbers into hundreds. It's more than 100 Purva Karmas are there if you list it together. Like if you see Basti, there are varieties of Basti, Sthanika Basti and Abhyantra Basti. Varieties are there. Shirodhara, Shiroseka less attended. Of course, nowadays for the hyperactivity disorders, we go for Shirodhara in children who are able to cooperate. Shiroseka or Pichu, Sarvangadhara, Kaya Seka, Pidichil. These are the different varieties of Svedanas or Sneha Sveda together, Sneha Sveda complex. Together, we are practicing in the management of developmental disorders as per the requirement. 
coming to the snehana again uh, varieties of snehana are there of course abhyanga is the most common thing which we are practicing here the most important thing is the selection of oil what which type of oil to be selected it base it, it is again based upon the doshak doshik involvement uh, the oils which are indicated uh, for particular disease conditions for example dhanvantara taila there is one yoga of dhanvantara taila which is mentioned in the sutika paricharya sutika paricharya means the involution of uterus has to take place properly the abdominal muscles have to go back to their normal for which dhanvantara taila is indicated that dhanvantara taila if you are using in Uh, developmental disorders in neurological conditions where sthiratva is required dhanvantara would be the better one where vata haratva is required it will not be dhanvantara taila better you have you can go for bala taila or kshira bala taila or such like where brahmana karma plus vata haratva is required balashwagandha di taila will be your drug of choice where brahmana is required mahamasha taila will be the drug of choice likewise we have to make selection of oils in the purva karma in the snehana bahya sneha vidhi Tailam sankuchite bhenge maasha saindava sadhitam. This is just one line ashtang hridaya gives with which we have to take the clue and go ahead with this. Commonly we are using shirabala taila, we are using mahanarayana taila, and we are using balashwagandha di taila. There are contraindications for these procedures too. Though texts have not detail give, uh, de given in detail about the contraindications and complications, we have to be very careful on these things. Particular sensitivity of the patient. because uh, shirabala taila bala taila is said to be most uh, suitable for all uh, skin conditions but it is bala taila is mentioned for navajata shishu also but we have seen allergy to the bala taila so in such conditions are there but we will be very careful on that prakriti or dosha prakriti and vyadhi prakriti both things are to be taken into care of and complications usually uh, snehana abhyanga does not uh, cause any complications the complications are more because of the procedure wrong application of pressure wrongly doing the massage the dravya or taila used and heat usually uh, it is its incidences taking place without because of the heat issue going to the swedana varieties of oko charaka has mentioned variety of swedana all the swedanas cannot be applied in children nadi swedha is the most common one and sarvanga swedha we are doing otherwise a uh, modification of this again pinda swedha is the other one we are using shastika shala uh, shastika shali pinda swedha is the other one of course if you are using shastika shali pinda swedha in children the one the cautionary note is of course it is not a contraindication or anything but cautionary note uh, it is a brahmana procedure when while you are doing the shastika shali pinda swetha there will be relief in uh, contractures of course you may feel that it is getting benefit but over a period of time the child may get weight the weight gain is one complication of that which has to be taken care of proper exercise or proper uh, measures to be taken to control this uh, rujahara dravya or rujahara properties having such type of things are to be used which are more preferred when there is a pain predominant conditions Uh, the eight type varieties of swetha mentioned by kashyapa again of which nadi upana and parisheka these are the three commonly used swethas we are using uh, swethana there are certain indications uh, certain uh, precautionary measures mentioned by acharyas like covering the eyes covering the marma sthanas and all these are all to be practiced or all to be followed upanaha is another one when whenever there is contracture upanaha would be the ideal one particularly cases like in spastic cp uh, and other things only thing is ratro uh, baddham ratro diva munchet munchet ratro diva kartam means it should not be kept for a longer time it should be tied and for a very particular time period you have to keep it and then you have to open it up coming to the other major procedures of panchakarma vamana though there is no indication of vamana in developmental disorders other than shodhana of course if you want to do shodhana you can go for virechana because vamana uh, cooperation of the children for particularly for the vamana will be very difficult aspiration is a very major issue in this this so if elderly children who are able to cooperate yes we can do this otherwise vamana is not practically uh, practiced i have never come across with vamana practice in uh, developmental disorders virechana is the most commonly used one in autism spectrum disorders considering the involvement there is there is gut microbiome involvement and uh, grahani chikitsa there are uh, traditional physicians as well as physicians practicing grahani chikitsa in autism spectrum disorders which gives very good very good response in certain cases where uh, virechana is indicated yes virechana can be given 
of course, in Virechana cooperation, the child is required for the administration of the drug. After that, the, the rest of the things the drug will take care of. Dehydration and other complications are to be taken care of. Otherwise, Virechana is one of the safest procedure which can be practiced for Shodhana purpose. This is very uh, contraindications and uh, complications. Coming to the basti, this is the major uh, panchakarma procedure, which, which has got multifaceted action in almost all the developmental uh, issues. It is artha chikitsa, as said by our acharyas. It can be given in children also. Though people of my age group who have studied the BAMS, there was one syllabus topic like balanam panchakarma nishedha. So we, are, we were wondering why, of course, in the UG period, we didn't understand what is the meaning of that. But when it came to the PG, we understood, yes, it is nisheda, shodhanatmaka panchakarma is nishedita, whereas panchakarma procedures, particular or individual procedure for specific disease conditions, there is no contraindication at all. Because it starts with the navajata shishu paricharya itself, garbhodaka vamana onwards. Even rakta mokshana is also indicated in childhood period, though there is a contraindication otherwise. The safest rakta mokshana is jaluka. <laughs> Varieties of Bastis are there, and uh, Karma Vasti, Kala Vasti, Yoga Vasti, and uh, Kashyapa's contribution here is Chatru Badra Kalpa Vasti. However, we didn't find any specific difference between Chatru Badra Kalma, Kalpa Vasti and uh, Yoga Vasti. Though the number of Bastis are different, the therapeutic efficacy is almost almost the same. There is no much difference in that. Probably looking into the age group, he has mentioned Chatru Badra Kalpa Vasti, where Snehana followed by Niruha, and then again Sneha Vasti is mentioned. The commonly used basti yoga, Madhu Tailika basti, very, very popular one. Mustadi Apana basti is giving good response. Balaguru Chiyadi basti, or depending upon the doshi conditions, you can select the basti. Dashamulika or Irandamula, the other things. Only one thing which is to be kept uh, in mind is the dosage. Uh, basti Dravya Pramana is to be taken care of. Bustadi Hapushadi Apana Basti we started recently using in development disorders and where in which we got, of course, appreciable good response. The minimum dose of Basti, usually, of course, Patra Basti, we start with 5 to 10 ml. Uh, I generally prescribe to uh, practice Matra Basti with the 10 to 20 ml of oil with the equal amount of boiling water, make an emulsion and administer. It does vata, uh, the actions of uh, Matra Basti, along with that little amount of what you call as Shodhana effect also will be there or uh, cleansing effect also is there. Balya and Dhatu Vardhana or Dhatu Vardhaka, this type of Hapushadi and Rajapana Bastis that also can be practiced in pediatric age group. Height weight of the children or particularly their tolerance, that this is to be taken into account. Nase is another major procedure, of course, we are using. Of course, in, among the Panchakarmas, only Basti and Nasya are helpful in the developmental disorders. If Shodhana is not required, if Shodhana is required, Virechana is the one. Generally, what we used to do is Deepanapachana first, followed by some few days, say three to four, five days of Udvartana to uh, prepare the child for a further course of action. Then Sneha Sveda, and then we go for Basti, and then after the Parihari Kala, we go for the Nasya procedure. Um, Pratimarsha and Marsha, two varieties of Nasya you know very well. Pratimarsha Nasya can be practiced in day to day, whereas Marsha Nasya we are using in the hospital only or in the hospital setup only. In development disorder, particularly ASD, autism spectrum disorders, autism as such, attention deficit type of activity disorders, definitely we are using Marsha Nasya with a higher dose of six to eight drops. And uh, the initial response, of course, the child has to cooperate, otherwise initial one or two days, we do the Pratimarsha and then we go for the Marsha, so that child becomes practice to it. And uh, the first response what we see is cooperation of the child. Third or fourth day onwards, the child cooperates very well. The parents, they say that the sleep pattern is very good, it's improving, and his irritability, hyperactivity slowly, gradually comes down. Rakta motion is not indicated in uh, developmental disorders. Only one is there, that is uh, Jaluka, which you can practice. But uh, I have come across certain instances or certain uh, sh experience of uh, sh uh, experience sharing that Marma Sthana Rakta Mokshana is helpful, but I have not seen uh, anyone practicing this. The, those uh, acupuncture practitioners, they have advised or they tell about this, and those who are uh, practicing cupping in uh, Unani medicine, they are also mentioning about this, but not, I'm not very sure of this. Shirodhara and Shirobasti, wherever child cooperates with us, yes, we can do Shirodhara, we can do Shirobasti also. The alternate for this Shirodhara and Shirobasti to some extent is Pichu, Pichu Dharana, that also can be done. 
selection of oil is yours. In autism spectrum disorders, in our institute, we have tried with uh, certain uh, formulations like Samvardhanagrata. We have tried with the Abhayadi Grata, then uh, uh, Panchendri Vardhana Taila in the management of uh, ASD. Uh, the Grata Manda Nasya, it, it is our practice. All, all Medhya Gratas like Kalyana Grata, Saraswata Grata, or Brahmi Grata, Grata Manda we collect, and th this with Grata Manda we used to do Nasya. That also gives a good response in autism spectrum uh, conditions. Abhyanga and Abhyanga particularly, it is very, very helpful in uh, calming up the child. ADHD is another uh, issue wherein Vata Hara approach gives good response. Shirodhara, where child is cooperative, we can do the Shirodhara also. Internally, Brahmi Grata, Saraswata Grata, or Shankha Pushpi based preparations. If you see the Medhya Rasayanas, you can uh, categorize them, or Medhya Dravyas, you can categorize them into two categories. One is having Ushna Tishna Guna, and another is Shita and Shamaka property. Wherever hyperactivity, Vata is too much aggravated, you have to go for the Shama or Shamaka properties, and wherever it is less, you can go for the other one. Uh, drugs like Jyotishmati and other things are not very commonly used in this, this type of conditions. Uh, there are a lot of publications available. Many of them are theoretical in nature, and many of them are not in standard uh, journals. But there is one uh, uh, systematic uh, review and meta-analysis of uh, Shirodhara in uh, Ch Ch this uh, ADHD condition I come across, which is a very recent publication from CCRAS, where they have taken 10 studies. Uh, three out of ten studies, Shirodhara was the uh, drug of, I mean, modality of treatment, and in a systematic review they have done. Uh, the outcome of this systematic review is yes, there is a very definite positive role of panchakarma based or procedure based therapies in the management. So, what we require, the take home message is this holistic approach is required, judicial use of medicine, judicial use of or, uh, proper dietary management, uh, the panchakarma procedures followed by Rasayana. This, this will be very helpful in the management of such conditions. So this is all we have dis uh, discussed, the karmas practiced or procedures we practice in the management. Sometimes the poisons also can act as medicines. This has been ac accepted also. It do panchakarma is a panacea for uh, such diseases? I don't agree with this. Panchakarma has its limitations, the uh, yukti or the Kurya Dhyuham Swayam Dhyaya, what Charaka says, it is the yukti of the physician, it is the decision of the physician uh, de decides what karma is to be practiced and uh, what medicines are to be practiced. Though Ayurveda Amritanam we say, it is not Amrita in every stage. Of course it is having a lot of benefits, but there are limitations too, which we have to understand. Uh, this is this photograph which I want to share because the Director General of World Health Organization had visited our institute and it had made him to say that this is the first kind of center which will help uh, to invest on traditional medicines. It was before the uh, you know, foundation stone laying ceremony of GCTM. Thank you for patient hearing and thank you for the organizers for giving me opportunity, P.P. Vyasar and his team and uh, Professor Pajapati and his team. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Sir, for such a thought-provoking session and sharing your expertise with us all. Now, for our next session, we have among us our distinguished guest speaker, Padma Sri Vaidya Balindu Prakash Ji. Please, Vaidya Balindu Prakash Ji hails from a traditional Ayurvedic family. He practices Rasastra in Ayurved that deals with therapeutic of processed mercury and metals, minerals, in the prevention and treatment of chronic inflammatory immunological and metabolic disorder. He is the founder director of BCP and PADAP. He has received many grants from government and private uh, bodies to support the experimental and clinical research projects and he developed products and protocols for the treatment of allergic rhinitis, migraine, pancreatitis, hepatitis, etc. He has nearly 37 international publications and two international patient, uh, patents to his credit. He has made more than 300 foreign visits and made numerous presentations at national and international levels. He is recipient of fourth highest civilian award, Padma Sri, from the President of India. 
He is known for his pioneer work in introducing, introducing evidence-based treatment protocols and products in Ayurveda. Let us be warmly welcome by Dvalindu Prakashji to share his expertise to field. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Honorable Chairperson, Co-Chairperson, my colleague speakers, uh, learned faculty, Professor Abhanyu Kumarji, uh, my friend from Nepal, Dr. Rakesh Singh, other faculty members and students. I am standing in front of you in a conference it is for pediatrician, but I am neither a pediatrician. I don't know who am I. Usually people call me I am a Rash Shastri. But Rash Shastra, which is based on a principle na roga naam, na dosha naam, na dusha naam parikshahit, na deshasya na kalasya, kalasya chikasya ke. Since my childhood, Childhood means in Ayurveda. I joined Ayurveda in 1978 after my completing my BSc. And that's why childhood in Ayurveda. And I always go for evidence. So today, when I heard about this conference going on in, Jam in uh, Jodhpur Ayurveda University, so I had a discussion with Dr. Prajapati. We keep on calling each other. So he said, we are having a conference on Komar Khan. Sir, I treat a disease very effectively called childhood asthma. Well, that I didn't know because people know me for other diseases. So then he invited me to present my work on childhood asthma. And I will, I'm not a professor. I'm just a BMS, BSc, and I know how to make medicine, treat patients. And a part of that, I keep on documenting. Since it is not my domain, I don't have big numbers, but whatever I have, I am going to present with you. So childhood asthma is a disease of a modern world, and it affects globally. In India, nearly 2 to 18 percent children suffer with it, and out of that, 15 percent are those who suffer with recurring and severe category of that. And the symptoms are recurring cold and cough with wheezing. It is differentiated between adult and childhood asthma. So recurring episodes of cold and cough are considered as childhood asthma. And it happens. This is a normal uh, slide, a normal picture of airway. And there's another one. In children, basically what happens, it is a chronic inflammatory disorder. And whenever there is an episode of cold, the phlegm comes and it blocks and the wheezing starts. Uh, it has been categorized into two, intermittent and persistent. And persistent is further divided into mild, moderate, and severity, depending on the clinical and this uh, lung function test. And that is the burden about the disease that in the United States, nearly 6 billion people suffer with it. There's the anecdotal data from India because our health agencies have not taken any prolonged survey of the disease, but estimated 2 to 18 percent children suffer with it. And the disease is more common in metros. And southern state of India has the highest incidences of childhood asthma. And the disease is before puberty, more prominent among boys. But after all, after that, it is equally distributed in both. This is the slide talks about the treatment. Whatever the treatment modern medicine has for it, either steroids, antibiotics, anti-allergics, if they are used for long, they affect the growth of the child, which affects the intellect and physical conditions. In Ayurveda, as I said, that Ayurveda talks about Shwasarok. Uh, there is a, some misprint, I think. There are five types of Shwasarok. Shudra Shwas, Chidne Shwas, Maha Shwas, Tamak Shwas, and Urdu Shwas. But uh, there is no special category of childhood asthma in our classical text. But we have taken that recurring cold and cough, as Pratish Shah is very much mentioned, with 2000, 5000 BC in Charak Sanita. So our masters have attributed Jeet Pratishyaya or Dush Pratishyaya among children or in Balroga. 
So it is different than modern concept because as they have a different category of Shastrog in children. And this is our data of 21 years, only 125 cases. And as you can see, more boys, less girls, and age-wise distribution, they were less than 12 years age. The history of in years that we have number of patients, less than one year history, one to three years, three to six, and six to nine years. Intermittent, mild percent, persistent, moderate persistent, severe persistent. Because usually people who come to me, come to our practice, they were those who have been failed with recurring attack uh, with the modern medicine after going through uh, experts for the treatment. And this is talks about the frequency of episodes, five days, uh, once a week, two times a week, once a month, two times a month, three times a month, seasonal and recurring. We have the highest one among the recurring category who are getting it very frequently. And these were the common symptoms uh, which they presented with and maximum head cuff, nasal obstruction, recurrent chest infections, rhinorrhea, sore throat, wheezing. And this is the response to ATP, that we have 14% who lost to follow up. We don't know what happened to that. So, and worse is zero. Poor response is 9%. Fair is 23, but good is 54%. Good means that they were cured forever, without medicine, without symptoms. And this is the uniform protocol. As I said, that I am a Rasvaidya. I don't emphasize on Prakriti. I emphasize on Vikriti. Vikriti is clear that they are diagnosed with childhood asthma. So here we treat a, uh, uh, developed a protocol which comprising of Swanabhasant Malti. Uh, second is Imbo. I will explain. And the third is Kumar Kalyanadas. And with that, we give a rich protein and fat diet. Besan ka laddu, uh, chana, paneer, badam dood, or sometimes rabadi, ice cream, whatever is prohibited in, which is considered visual ahar in childhood summer, we consider to be our patya while we are using the sojdis. And this is Swanabhasad Bhanti. It is a modified. We use Yadavji Tikramji Siddh Yog Sangra as our reference book. But Yadavji Tikramji has used Swan work. We have used Swan Basma. And Siddh Hingul, we use Siddh Makradhaja out of that. Otherwise, the formula is almost the same. And uh, where is the other thing? What happened to other slides? Slide kither king? Slide gaya bhoog is used. No more bhi thi isse pehle. Isse pehle. Is aur bhi thi. Gaya bhe. Pura complete. Nii mere paas to hai. Email per bheji thi mene. No, this is the one. I had an email. Did you send me an email? Did you say it? Yes. Did you say it? Yes. 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 देखो यहाँ पर आप ये तो भेजी हैं यहाँ के बच्चे नाल थे फिर इम्बो है अभी मेल खोल देते हैं मेल खोलो बालेंद्र पुरासे ही है इस 
उसमें वीडियो भी थी वीडियो भी मैं प्ले हो रही है चलो दिखाओ 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 भुबुक्षित है ये खा गई कुछ लाइट बलेंदु प्रकाश हाँ बलेंदु प्रकाश से होगी बी ए एल मुझे पासवर्ड तो याद है नहीं रिमूव कर देंगे मुझे पासवर्ड याद ही नहीं है तो इस पर भेज दीजिए सर आप इस इसमें लाइट भेज दीजिए ये खुला हुआ है इस डी एस आर आर और टाइट दो दिन पहले भेज दी थी मैंने अरे गायब हो गई मैंने जो भेजी तो है ही नहीं ई मेल पर देखो अपनी अभी नया भेज दी अच्छा इस पर वापस कर दी हाँ जी सर आई टी पे नहीं है तो आई टी की नहीं है आई टी में जी सर नोट आई टी डाउनलोड करनी पड़ेगी नहीं तो वीडियो नहीं चलेगी ये एक बच्चे एक बच्चे चलो 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 एक बच्चे करो इसे भी चलो आगे चलो आगे हाँ जी है पीछे जो हाँ जी और पीछे and the second medicine we used is imbo which is a standardized and modified form of pranavamandur and in studies it has shown in two rct uh, done by subject experts it has shown superiority than levocetrizine and montelukast combination in reducing ig and total nasal score that has been published in a pubmed journal and other than that in experimental models which has been done by a internationally accredited dsir approved cro it has many immune modulator properties which has been subjected to that so this medicine has been given and sometimes kumar kalyanadas again from sidyog sangra is used in the combination uh, at 6 mg uh, per kg body weight so outcome is that uh, patients of childhood asthma keep on getting benefited after this treatment there is no adverse effect and this medicine has been given up to 30 months in the patients and minimum 6 to 8 months and only side effect that when a child was treated at the age of 4 years or 5 years and when they turned up after attaining 15 or 16 years they were the tallest in the house so i don't know what is the combination what is the effect of this combination of swarnavasan malti imbo and the diet of the child they are all taller and based on that i am 5 foot 3 inch my wife is also same size i gave it to my son he didn't have childhood asthma and is taller 6 feet height so many patient come to us that how to gain height i don't know what is the science behind it but at least i want to say what is the future direction since we have empirical data and it is statistically significant it is reproducible so there is a need to standardize and develop this drug master file of these medicine which are used because many medicines which are available in the market because swarnavasan malti again big question mark is 
which Swarnavasan Malti. I always talk, make a comment in my talk that Beej Vahi, Khet Khalyan Bhi Vahi, Tractor Bhi Vahi, Kisan Bhi Vahi, Tubewell Ka Pani Bhi Vahi, Khad Bhi Vahi, Uske Baad Chakki, Parat, Tawa, Chakla Belan, Chula Bhi Vahi, Aur Banane Wari Badal Gai, Roti Jal Gai. Ras Shas Ki Jo Aushdiya Hai, Reproducibility is very important. I have seen the effect of Sarvasan Malti, which are prepared at our Rashala. So don't get confused that if you use the Swarnapasan Malti from market, you will get the same results. So if you don't get result, don't blame me. But if you use Swarnapasan Malti, which has come from a Ras Vaidya, at least from a Ras Vaidya who are practicing and making it, that will definitely give you the same results. But I feel there's a need to develop SOPs and drug master file for these medicines so that we get quality medicine and reproducibility, which is the prerequisite for uh, natural medicine by WHO, that reproducibility is must. Second thing, though there is also no side effect, there should be safety studies on that using OECD guidelines, acute, subacute, chronic toxicity. And then RCT is also required to, stand, uh, to set up a strong proof of efficacy. And again, pharmacological explanation is necessary. And then, Pratakshyam Kim Pramanam, this video chala do jara. This video is Hello, I am Neeraj Gupta. I am a sculptor, a public art specialist. And I have been talking about 25 years ago, when I was talking about Balindu Prakash, के देरा दोन वाले उनके और डाले में गया था उनकी किचन और उनके घर से रिलेटेड कुछ काम के सिलसिले में तो तब बड़ा मैं मेंटली थोड़ा सा डिस्टर्ब था कि बुटिया के चाइल्ड और अस्मा को लेकर के तो जब उनको इस बात का पता चला तो उन्होंने कहा कि आप इसकी चिंता ना करो उन्होंने मेरी बुटिया के चाइल्ड और � बताया कि इस ट्रीटमेंट से क्योंकि वो बड़ी स्वीयर कैटेगरी का उसको चाइल्डू डस्मा था अंदाजन दो साल का समय लगेगा और जैसे जैसे उन्होंने कहा जो जो चेंजेस बच्चे में आने थे वो सब आए उसके साथ ही उन्होंने एक चीज और कही थी उस वक्त कि जिन भी बच्चों को उन्होंने ये ट्रीटमेंट दिया है वो बच्चे अपनी पूरे खानदान में सबसे लंबे निकले हैं और आज 25 साल बाद मैं इस बात को कंफर्म कर सकता हूँ कि मेरी बेटिया की हाइट जो कि पांच फुट आठ इंच है हमारे खानदान में किसी भी लड़की की हाइट इतनी नहीं है मेरी वाइफ की हाइट पांच फुट एक इंच है तो डेफिनेटली उनका जो चाइल्डहुड अस्थमा का ट्रीटमेंट है जो प्रोटोकॉल है वो बहुत इफेक्टिव है और इसको एक साइंटिफिक इसका रिव्यू होने के बाद इसका सब इसका उपयोग हर कोई क्योंकि चाइल्डहुड डस्टमैन बहुत बड़ी समस्या कर सके ऐसा होना चाहिए तो ये मेरे एक बहुत पुराने पेशेंट हैं क्योंकि इलाज में इलाज करना देन अगेन सस्टेनेबल इफेक्ट कि इसका प्रोलॉग नो नो रिलैप्स ऑफ द डिजीज दैट इज विजिबल एंड व्हाट आई सेड द लॉन्गेस्ट height, highest in the family, that is visible by this right. And the lastly, I have the latest uh, testimonial from Bombay. This boy was not able to run even 100 meters in one go. And after going through all allopathic hospital, he took this treatment. And now he plays whole day without any side effect and without any symptoms. With these words, I thanks to the organizers for inviting me in this uh, Kumar Khan and all of you for listening me patiently. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your immense knowledge and inspiring work that you shared with us all today. Now for our next speaker, Dr. S.K. King Sila Manohari. We are delighted to extend a warm welcome to Dr. S.K. King Sila Manohari, our distinguished guest speaker. Dr. Manohari currently holds the position of senior lecturer at the National Institute of Traditional Medicine in Sri Lanka. With extensive academic and professional qualifications, 
डॉक्टर मनोहरी हॉल से पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट डिग्री फ्रॉम आई पी जी टी आर एन जामनगर इन एडिशन टू दिस सी हैज ऑल्सो परस्यूड डिप्लोमा इन साइकोलॉजिकल काउंसलिंग एंड हैज कम्प्लीटेड वेरियस सर्टिफिकेट कोर्सेज इंक्लूडिंग ज्योतिष एंड यातुकर्म विधि एस्ट्रोलॉजी हर्बल ड्रग्स एंड कॉस्मेटिक्स वैल्यू एडिशन टेक्निक्स एंड मसाज थेरेपी ऑल्सो हर एक्सटेंसिव एक्सपीरियंस इंक्लूड सर्विंग एज ए लेक्चरर कन कंडक्टिंग वर्कशॉप एंड ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स एंड एक्टिवली पार्टिसिपेटिंग नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल सेमिनार्स वी आर ऑनर टू हैव डॉक्टर एस के किंग सिला मनोहरी शेयर हर इंसाइट्स एंड एक्सपीरियंस विद अस प्लीज जॉइन अस इन एक्सटेंडिंग एक बार वेलकम टू मनोहरी थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आई बो वॉन्ट टू ऑल वेरी गुड टू ऑल ऑफ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू respected chairperson my dear teacher professor kalpana patel madam co chairperson uh, other uh, chief guest and all the dignitaries myself dr king sila manohari from sri lanka i am going to today speak about the safety and efficacy of the rasa aushadha in pediatrics coming to the introduction rasa aushadhis are herbal mineral preparations these are very special in pediatrics because of its properties of easy to handle need small doses has no taste and fast acting a number of common rasa aushadha are found in practice for prevention as well as for the treatment of pediatric disorders among that various rasa aushadha preparations are more popular in pediatrics like that swarna preparations lahua preparations and mandura preparation safety and efficacy of rasa aushadha in pediatric therapeutics is subject of great concern in present era when going through the ayurvedic classical texts we want to see the uh, special references for the rasa aushadha uh, contribution to kaumarudya in that acharya charaka mentioned his uh, chikitsa sthana 8 chapter the expect uh, child expecting uh, lady should drink handful of curd milk or water without having without leaving any leaf uh, left over duly immersed with red hot male statues made of gold silver and iron for the good uh, healthy progeny as well as pun savana karma when we go through the jatakarpa sanskara acharya sushruta and vagbata mentions several swarna bashma uh, compounds for the uh, increasement of the vapu meda bala ayu vardana for that uh, that sushruta acharya mention swarna churna have to take with the madhu and grita and vagbata acharya mention with that have to take the medya aushad like uh, swarna uh, shanka pushpi vacha brahmi in uh, sushruta acharya vagbata acharya and kashyap acharya mention swarna prashana for the uh, uh, increasement of the intelligent increasement of the body growth and the uh, ayu varna bala apeksha uh, they uh, sh baby should have take the swarna pashana their uh, life uh, some acharyas mention it has to take uh, till one year uh, in especially kashyap acharya mention if uh, child uh, taking swarna pashana for one month it um, that child uh, taking uh, uh, buddhi vardaka and if taking 6 uh, months that child will uh, shruta dara for that uh, sushuta acharya mentioned four type of categories of swarna pashana uh, uh, preparations and uh, vagbata acharya mentions swarna uh, should be have to taken in uh, two method of preparations with madhu and grita in uh, acharya kashyapa only mention the swarna have to take with madhu and grita regarding proving the that uh, so effect of the swarna pashana there uh, nowadays our scholars conducting several research works 
for proving their safety and efficacy. In uh, since 1981, Gujarat Ayurveda uh, University, uh, IPG and RA conducting research works uh, regarding uh, Swarna Prashana and its uh, effect. Uh, till now, they are conducting several type of uh, uh, research works uh, on Swarna Prashana, as well as other institute also conducting several researches for proving the effect, safety and efficacy of the Swarna Prashana in children and they uh, uh, already checked their uh, uh, efficacy in the uh, child growth uh, and enhance the immunity uh, and the toxicological effect of the Swarna Prashana. This research article shows the uh, physical growth parameters increasement by giving the Swarna Prashana to 60 number of newborns, they, uh, their results showing they do not show any side effects and it, uh, they show significant uh, results in the uh, physical growth. Coming to the another modified preparation, this is uh, actually I got from the uh, uh, research article that is mentioned in the Swarnam Rutta Prashana, it is, it is Anubhuta Yoga in SDM Hasan. This is a dedicated preparation of the Grita and Swarna uh, combi combination with other medic uh, neuro um, neuro neurodevelopmental courses, uh, medicine co connecting. Basically, it is given for the, therapeut therapeutically it is given for the immune enhance. But several research articles shown it can be give, uh, give to the uh, Shaya Mutra, developmental delay, and other uh, neurological disorders also. Kumara Kalyana Rasa is mentioned in the Baisajarat Navali, which is very commonly used Rasa Ushada in the Bala Roga. Since uh, birth, the child can give that. Uh, Kumara Kalyana Rasa for the uh, Jara, Shwasa, Vamana, Parigarbika, gar, um, gar, um, Graha Dosha, Stanya Dosha, Kamala, etc. for the enhances, enhance of their immunity and the growth of the development. This, is, uh, this article shows the safety and efficacy of the Kumar Kalyana Rasa and Sitopaladi Churna in the child's development. This shows, this, uh, according to this study, this drug is safety and efficacy wise, it is good for the children. Kumar Barna Rasa also modified Ayurvedic Swarna uh, containing uh, me medicine which is uh, mostly found in the SDM Hassan College, that uh, drug already contains Swarna Bhashma, Rajita Bhashma, and Pravala Bhashma. Therapeutically, it is used for developmental delay, chronic respiratory infections, and autoimmune diseases. These articles prove that Kumara Barana Rasa uh, for the chronic tonsillitis, it shows its uh, safety and efficacy in uh, that uh, children grew below 5 to 10 and be below uh, 5 to 10. Uh, this medicine, Chatur Bujarasa, is not coming under the exactly in the Balaroga Adhikaravo Balachikisa, but it is mentioned in, in Ayurveda Sarasangraha. This also having um, Herb, uh, herb and mineral uh, ingredients used, but you, it can use for chronic fever, emaciation, epilepsy, psychotic disease, and uh, paralysis. But uh, according to my knowledge, I couldn't found any research article to prove the safety and efficacy for that. Uh, we have to do those things in uh, pre-treatment practice for the near future. Chatur Mukarasa also mentioned in the Baisajja Ratnavali, this can use 
we can use for the unmada akshepa uh, agdimanda and vata prakopaja roga uh, it is mentioned in uh, by sajja ratnavali uh, vata vyadi adhikari it also have several types of uh, rasa aushada kribikutara rasa is very uh, commonly used rasa aushada in balaroga uh, it, all, it, is, it, it is not contained Swarnabhashma or like that Datu preparations in Rasa Ushada, but it uh, contains Shuddha Hingula, Shuddha Vasanaba. Uh, this is very much uh, therapeutically uh, useful drug in the worm infestation as well as convulsion, constipation due to the worm, uh, worms in children we can use. Krimikutara uh, rasa, this is, this is very commonly used rasa preparation in the pediatrics. As well as Krimikutara, uh, Shwasakasa Chintamani also not mentioned in the Balaroka Chikisa, but uh, most of uh, physicians use this uh, Aushada for the uh, chronic respiratory disorders that is mentioned in the Basadratnavali Hikashwasa Adhikara. For that, uh, proving its uh, safety and efficacy, this uh, clinical article is showing their, uh, prove, prove their uh, safety and efficacy in uh, number of 37 uh, age between 12, uh, 2 to 12 uh, children in bronchial asthma. They shows their safety and efficacy in like that. Coming to the iron containing rasa preparation, mainly they are, uh, we are using very few number of rasa, uh, iron containing uh, rasa aushadis in pediatrics. This article mentioned nearly 80 uh, iron containing uh, rasa aushadis, um, but we are using very few number of rasa aushadis, uh, iron containing uh, preparations in pediatric. The, among, the, among that, the few of uh, researches I found from the re, uh, research articles, those are um, uh, used to iron deficiency anemia and the sickle cell anemia. They are used Datri uh, Lauho syrup and Mandura Bashma for the iron deficiency anemia. In that uh, research shows, uh, those are uh, safety in uh, practice and uh, efficacy wise it is good. Uh, for the sickle cell anemia that researcher used Gomeda Mandura Kasisa Bashma that also uh, showing safety wise it is okay and the efficacy wise it showing significant results. As well as above mentioned uh, preparations other uh, rasa medicines also can be used can be used and some practitioners are used commonly in uh, practice uh, mainly shwasakutara rasa tribuna kutkiti rasa lakshmi vilasa rasa for the chronic respiratory disorders as well as manasamitravati smruti sagara rasa for the neurological disorders like developmental delay adhd autism like that condition and gandhaka rasayana for uh, all the gi tract git tract disorders and uh, skin diseases uh, as well as in vata roga chikitsa we can use bruhat vata chintamani uh, rasa those are mentioned in the these references as well as I want to emphasize one another thing, uh, in Sri Lanka also we are practicing several types of rasa ushadis. In uh, Sri Lanka, in 13th century, uh, we found uh, one, one book, Prayoga Ratnavali. It's mentioned rasa ushadis, uh, rasa ushadis in uh, Sri Lankan practice. Uh, uh, out of that, we commonly use rasa aushadis found in uh, Sri Lanka. That uh, that book is we called as Vatika Prakaranaya. From that we use so many uh, rasa aushadi preparations in nowadays practice. Among them, uh, I want to emphasize uh, pills like things we using we called as guli, Sita Rama guli, uh, Rama Bana guli, Murtunche guli, Maha 
महा मातु पहागुली कोलदा उन्नड़ गुली दिए तराम गुली एंड एस वेल एस सेवरल टाइप ऑफ स्कालकस वी आर यूजिंग डे टू डे लाइफ टू ट्रीटिंग द पीरियड ट्री प्रैक्टिस शरकरादी कालक जस्टी कालक बुद्धराज कालक यशोदरा कालक एंड विजय कुमार कालक ऑल द प्रिपरेशंस वी डिड नॉट फाउंड स्वर्ण बश्म बट वी फाउंड सेवरल अदर टाइप्स ऑफ महारस उपरस एंड साधारण रस मेंशन इन द रसशास्त्र एस वेल एस ताईला प्रिपरेशन दोसा इन द सहस्र ताईला योग बुक उल्लुआ ताईला या प्राणचीव ताईला या सत्तवादी ताईला या कोलशरस्मा ताईला या दोस ऑयल्स आ वेरी मच प्रैक्टिकली यूजिंग ऑयल्स दे ऑलरेडी कंटेन रसा उषदीस दे आ वेरी मच प्रैक्टिकली प्रूव्ड दे आ एफिकेसी बट टिल नाउ नो एनी रिसर्च वर्क डन फॉर � Coming to discussion and conclusion, Swarna preparations are more commonly found in neonatal period preparations in Ayurvedic classics. In Swarna Bhashma of the formulation plays a key role in overall efficacy as non nanoparticle of gold have possessed immunomodulatory activity, free radicals scarving activity, anti-stress anti -stress effect and analgesic activity. It is also found significant effect in healthy children by increasing their physical growth. As well as uh, some research work had been proven antioxidant property of the gold nanoparticles, which effectively helps regulate antigen-specific immune response and improve the health. Thus, uh, herbal uh, metallic formulations containing gold are effective in the illness as well as improving the health. When considering the uh, bashma of gold contains nanoparticles of gold 56 to 57 nanometers, these nanoparticles would reach the target site of the action through blood after gastrointestinal take. Acute toxicity studies of Swarna bashma concluded that no mortality was found in mice up to 1 milliliter per 20 gram body weight of suspension containing 1 milligram of Swarna Bhashma. It was also found safe in chronic toxic toxicity studies. When considering the Laho Bhashma is reported to possess hematonic effect and hemoglobin regeneration efficacy in comparison to control and standard ferrous sulfate. Mandura Bhashma has shown hepatoprotective Activity, activity on CCL4 included hepatic injury. Uh, Bashma of Lauha, Mandura, and Kasi's eyes come under the umbrella of iron formulations. Lauha Bashma and Mandura Bashma are found safe at five times therapeutic effective dose in Charles Foster albino rats. Thus, iron preparations are found safe and efficacy uh, according to the, these uh, research findings. Uh, finally, I want to thank to all the organizing committee of the Kaumarakon and the faculty members and all the uh, uh, supportive members to uh, uh, Sri Lankan delegates. And finally, I would like to welcome to Sri Lanka. We also practice in Ayurveda as well as both the uh, traditional system in our country. Uh, we would like if you can come and share our uh, practicing uh, experience with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable knowledge. Your words definitely struck a chord with us all. Your praise, worthy work in the field, and your sheer dedication inspires us all. Of keynote speaker, we have a guest of honor. Hai. आदरणीय प्रोफेसर गुरुजी एस के खंडल जी जो रोग निदान एवं विकृति विज्ञान से संबद्ध शास्त्रीय और आधुनिक जो विषय वस्तु है उसको तर्कपूर्ण प्रस्तुत करने में माहिर हैं और ये भारतवर्ष के गिने चुने लोगों में इनकी गिनती की जाती है तो मैं आदरणीय गुरुजी से आशीर्वचन के लिए संक्षिप्त उद्बोधन के लिए आग्रह करूँगा थैंक यू
गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्मय श्री गुरुवे नम मैं सभी गुरुजनों को प्रणाम करते हुए मंचासीन रेस्पेक्टेड चेयरमैन के एस पटेल मैडम पी एम सिंह साहब राजगोपाल और प्रेम प्रकाश व्यास जी जो इस ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी के चेयरमैन हैं डॉक्टर बालेंदु प्रकाश और डॉक्टर मनोहरी सब ने एक वंडरफुल देर वर ए वेरी वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन पास टू द फ्यूचरिस्टिक आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द न्यू नोटोलॉजी बाय डॉक्टर बी एम सिंह सर एंड द यूज ऑफ ट्रेडिशियस यूज ऑफ पंचकर्मा इन चाइल्ड केयर दैट वॉज ए वेरी वंडरफुल पेपर बाय राजगोपाल देन अगेन टू पेपर्स वर ऑन रस शास्त्र रसोस द यूज ऑफ इन पीडेटिक केयर बाय बालेंद्र प्रकाश एंड डॉक्टर मनोहरी दिस इज ए वेरी गुड सब्जेक्ट एक्चुअली अभी जो ट्रेंड चल रहा है तो चिल्ड्रन जो है वो मोस्ट केयर्ड मेंबर है घर में उसके लिए पेरेंट्स किसी भी तरह की रिस्क नहीं लेना चाहते और मैं जहाँ तक रोग निदान में या मेरी प्रैक्टिस में देखता हूँ कि ये ओवर केयरिंग ऑफ चिल्ड्रन जो है ना ये भी रोगों का कई रोगों का निदान है ओवर केयरिंग में बहुत सारी ओवर फीडिंग होती है बहुत सारे ओवर मेडिकेशंस होते हैं अननेसेसरी वैक्सीनेशंस होते हैं और इससे भी बढ़कर के जो कॉम्पिटिटिवनेस है ना इस युग की उसमें हम बच्चों को हर एक कंपटीशन को सक्सेसफुली कवर करने के लिए भी हम उसको बहुत प्रेशर डालते हैं और वो बड़ी एग्जॉस्टिव और समटाइम दैट इज़ डिप्रेसिव ऑल्सो और वो फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगनिंग स्कूल प्री स्कूल से लेकर के और उसके कैरियर मेकिंग तक और कैरियर में भी एक कैरियर के बाद में दूसरे दूसरे से तीसरे कैरियर में ट्रांसफर होने तक एग्जॉस्टिव एक पूरा लाइफ स्पान जो है वो इस कंपटीशन में चला जाता है विदाउट एनी प्रिपरेशन दे आर कंपेयर टू गेट सक्सेस इन एवरी कंपटीशन तो ये बहुत सारे कारण हैं और उसके कारण से आप देख रहे हैं कि हमारे बहुत सारे कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट्स जो हैं वो खुल रहे हैं वो क्या कर रहे हैं कैसे कर रहे हैं और वहाँ पर बच्चे अपने घरों से दूर जिस एज में उनका डेवलपमेंट होना है उन से दूर पीजी में रहते हैं या फिर कहीं और अपना खाने पीने की अव्यवस्थाओं में रहते हैं तो ये बड़ा टफ टाइम है उन बच्चों के लिए एक साथ हम उनकी केयर कर रहे हैं और एक साथ हम उनको दूसरी बीमारियों की तरफ धकेल रहे हैं तो ये जो सब्जेक्ट है पीडेटिक्स का या कुमार वृत्ति इस पर कल गवर्नर साहब ने भी माननीय गवर्नर साहब ने भी कहा था कि हमें बहुत काम करने की ज़रूरत है और मैं जानता हूं कि आयुर्वेद में एक बड़ा पोटेंशियल है जो अब हर एक सब्जेक्ट में बहुत सारी स्ट्रेंथ को हमें री एस्टेब्लिश करना है एस्टेब्लिश है वो लेकिन हमें दुनिया के सामने लाना है और हमें उसका री एस्टेब्लिशमेंट के लिए एक बहुत अच्छी अपनी स्ट्रेटजी बनानी पड़ेगी और इसके लिए कुछ सब्जेक्ट्स के एक्सपर्ट्स मैं जानता हूं पूरी भारत में बहुत सारे एक्सपर्ट्स हमारे सामने और पीछे और बहुत सारे अभी नहीं आए हैं उनमें बहुत कैपेबिलिटीज़ है और ये जो काम है इसमें हमें जो नेशनल गोल लेना चाहिए 
नेशनल स्ट्रेटेजी जो डिजीज का चाहे वो नीति आयोग की तरफ से हो चाहे स्वास्थ्य आयोग की तरफ से हो उसमें हमें अपना पार्ट जो है वो खुद लेना चाहिए और उनको बताना चाहिए कि व्हाट कंपोनेंट वी कैन डू वेरी सक्सेसफुली एंड वेरी अग्रेसिवली तो थैंक यू आई सेल थैंक्स टू द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी एंड दिस यूनिवर्सिटी दे आर सेकेंड टाइम fortunately i was present in the 2019 also and this is more uh, gracious and uh, more spread out in the many more countries 11 countries 11 foreign countries to ye sab karne ke liye aapko bahut bahut sadhuvaad dhanyawaad aur main chahta hu ki aap log lead le aur is pure विषय को भारत में हम कैसे पहुंचाएं और कितनी दक्षता के साथ में स्किल के साथ में ले जाएं इसके लिए आप लोगों को लीड लेनी चाहिए मैं आप सब लोगों का एक बार फिर से धन्यवाद करता हूं थैंक यू वेरी मच बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर अब हमारे आज के चेयरपर्सन प्रोफेसर कल्पना एस पटेल से मैं आग्रह करूंगा कि पूरे सेशन को कंक्लूड करें प्रोफेसर कल्पना पटेल के इंट्रोडक्शन के बारे में थोड़ा सा संक्षेप में बोलना चाहूँगा इट इज़ वेरी गेट ग्रेट प्लेजर दैट वी वेलकम आवर डिस्टिंग्विश्ड गेस्ट स्पीकर टुडे चेयर पर्सन प्रोफेसर पटेल ब्रिंग्स ए वेल्थ ऑफ नॉलेज एंड एक्सपीरियंस टू आवर गैदरिंग सर्विंग एज ए प्रोफेसर एंड एच ओ इन डिपार्टमेंट कॉमर विथ सी हैज थर्टी सेवन एक्सपीरियंस her expertise extends beyond the academic realm professor patel has not only contributed significantly to research with numerous publication peer reviewed journals but has also undertaken the responsibility of leading various administrative posts her commitment to advancing the understanding and application of ayurvedic principles is evident not only through her extensive teaching and research but also in her notable work in the areas of mother and child health care let us extend a warm welcome to professor kalpana s patel whose presence today adds immense value of to our event we eagerly anticipate the insights and wisdom she will share with us please join me in giving a hearty welcome to our esteemed guest speaker thank you thank you to all thank you to reporter न वासुदेव दानम अशुभम विद्यते कदि जन्म मृत्यु जरा व्याधि भयम नैवो पजायते रिस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर एस के खंडेल सर को चेयरपर्सन ऑल स्पीकर्स रिपोर्टियर्स माय टीचर प्रोफेसर हरिशंकर शर्मा साहब सीनियर पर्सन ऑन कौमा वृत्य प्रोफेसर वी पी शर्मा साहब अभिमन्यु कुमार सर ऑल डेलीगेट्स एंड डियर स्कॉलर्स so first of all i am thankful to organizer committee provide me opportunity as a chair person and chair this session on second day plenary session so thank you very much to organizing committee and professor p k prajapati sir vice chancellor of rajasthan ayurved university so thankful to them all speaker keynote speaker had delivered their keynotes well defined elaborate well and useful to particular or scholars and all delegates all topics selected by the organizing committee involved in syllabus so second paper of syllabus and third paper of syllabus and fourth paper of syllabus so this topic will useful to all scholars and delegates so my humble request to uh, organizing committee Uh, provide these these lectures to each and every college if possible they can deliver their lecture off and on when teacher is on leave then uh, time for the lecture at that time they can deliver share the knowledge of these keynote speakers to all not came here and in each and every scholar useful in pediatric coma rutyagna persons so first speaker was professor bm singh sir 
neonatal care. So neonatal care as per past, present and future. Both sides as per Ayurveda and as per modern science. Nowadays, Ayurveda comes again, exists, but nowadays awareness and get knowledge of uh, Ayurveda pediatrics. So Pran Pratyagaman Vidhi. Previously, when I was studied, at that time, Pran Pratyagaman Vidhi different. We are tapping on uh, backside, etc. Nowadays, golden minutes. And that's why they were doing the Pran Pratyagaman Vidhi different way. And it is valuable time within one minute if oxygen not uh, reaching at brain. So, so, so many neurological disorders. So we can found in children. So latest of NICU elaborated by the Professor Singh Saab and artificial intelligence in the delivery room. This need, whenever it will come in all hospital, that is question. But Professor Singh deliver in detail as Ayurveda purpose, modern purpose, past, present, and future way, and future of neonatal care. Second speaker, Dr. Raj Gopala, uh, my, he was my colleague at IPGT and RA, and we have worked together, very uh, family relation, and uh, he had delivered the Panch Karma. So Panch Karma at Jamnagar also uh, we are doing, and uh, he had developed Panch Karma at All India Institute of Ayurveda at Delhi. So neurological disorder in, uh, in Panch Karma. Abhyanga, Svedana, type of Svedana, and practical knowledge of neurodevelopment disorders. So delivered by him in details and very elaborately. Third speaker, Dr. Balindu Prakash Ji, Tamakswas and clinical experience. So Tamakswas or bronchial asthma, asthma, we can treat very easily and sometimes with difficult. But first we have to grade where stomach swas in which grade. Then we have to start herbal medicine, then uh, rasausadhi, etc. But each and every pathya sati gadartasya kimausadam nishevadai. Whenever patient to come us, at that time we have to uh, think which type of medicine we have to give. If with pathya we can treat, so first we have to start from the pathya. And necessary, then second herbal medicine, then third rasausadhi like this. So yesterday, uh, uh, KP Vyas sir also asking, in Kauma Vritya, research is very this. Not in Ayurveda, but modern science also in pediatric research is very this, in compared to other subject. So, Children are vulnerable and very difficult to do research. So uh, he had delivered in keynote speech, there is Tamakswas tweet by Swarnavasant Malti, Kumar Kalyan Cross, and Imbo. So good experience uh, he had shared, and he had given medicine to his son also. So fourth speaker, Dr. S.K. King Sila from Sri Lanka. Uh, she was also my student at IPGT and RA uh, and uh, under my guidance complete her work on ADHD. She delivered the Rasausadi in children, safety and efficacy. Started for Swarnaprasan and iron preparation and other preparation used at India and at Sri Lanka. But my experience in uh, now I am retired since two years, but I in my uh, clinical I have never used rasausadi for the treating the, the children. Usually I am using uh, only uh, herbal ausadi, mainly balchatur badra churna. Yesterday Dr. Raghunandan Sarma mentioned balchatur badra churna, and maximum I have treat the uh, children with. Uh, Valchatu brother Chun and my principal was Pathya Sati Gadar Tashya Kim Osadam Deshevane. So I have treated with the dietary restriction. So King Sila also uh, elaborated her lecture in detail. And 
conclude, uh, concluded about the swan of uh, iron and the useful Aushadi at Sri Lanka and they were using at Sri Lanka. So all keynote speaker had delivered their lecture with interest in details and useful for us. So I am thankful to all speaker. Uh, also organizing committee once again give me an opportunity as a chairperson in this plenary session. Thank you to all of you patiently hear these lectures and tolerate us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such a deep delve into our science and providing much needed guidance. Now, I am going to talk about the Smithy of 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 the सबसे पहले चेयरपर्सन प्रोफेसर के एस पटेल जी के लिए मैं प्रोफेसर पी पी व्यास जी से अनुरोध करूंगा कि उन्हें स्मृति चिन्ह दान करें प्रोफेसर गोविंद साय शुक्ला जी आज के गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर प्रोफेसर गुरुजी एस के खांडल सर को प्रोफेसर रामवीर जी प्रोफेसर बी एम सिंह आज के पहले की नोट स्पीकर को स्मृति चिन्ह भेंट करने के लिए मैं प्रोफेसर रामवीर जी को आमंत्रित करता हूं प्रोफेसर राजेश जी गुप्ता हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट सर्जरी से विनम्र अनुरोध है कि प्रोफेसर राज गोपाल एस जी को स्मृति चिन्ह भेंट करें विजयपाल त्यागी जी सर से निवेदन है पद्मश्री वैद्य वालेन्द्र प्रकाश जी के लिए स्मृति चिन्ह भेंट करने के लिए पधारे डॉक्टर मनीषा गोयल से अनुरोध है कि आज के की नोट स्पीकर डॉक्टर एस के किंग सिला मनोहरि को स्मृति चिन्ह भेंट करने के लिए पधारें डॉक्टर संजय श्रीवास्तव जी से निवेदन है कि आज के को चेयरपर्सन पी पी व्यास जी सर को स्मृति चिन्ह भेंट करें Now I request Professor P. P. Vyas Ji Sir to give memento and certificate to Dr. Rajaram Ji Sir, today's coordinator of this session.
मैं वोट ऑफ थैंक्स के लिए पी पी व्याजी सर को आमंत्रित करता हूँ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एज ए मार्क ऑफ रेस्पेक्ट आई बो माई हेड इन द फीट ऑफ माई एस्टिम टीचर्स एंड माई गाइडिंग फोर्सेज प्रोफेसर वेद प्रकाश जी शर्मा साहब फ्रॉम जयपुर प्रोफेसर हरिशंकर जी शर्मा साहब फ्रॉम जापान प्रोफेसर कल्पना बेन पटेल फ्रॉम जामनगर एंड प्रोफेसर अभिमन्यु कुमार जी फ्रॉम जयपुर दिस इज ए रेयर अपॉर्चुनिटी वेयर वी रिसीव द नेक्टर ऑफ कुमार वृत्य which is very useful and very important knowledge for our day to day practice as well as to serve the society in real sense here in this comarcon international conference we are honored with the gracious presence of these eminent ayurveda scholars the mercies of modern era and the budding scientists of ayurveda pediatrics i express my best regards on behalf of organizing committee to very eminent teachers very eminent scholars of ayurveda pediatrics across the country like madam saija from hasan madam kulkarni and so many eminent personalities who accepted our invitation and gave blessings to us i thank cordially to all keynote speakers whose knowledge as well as experience received by us for the updation as well as upgradation of our knowledge and skills so i thank the hall respected dais hall hearted thank you so much agla session isi hall mein 10 minute baad hoga start please attend thank you आज के सेशन के कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर राजाराम जी शर्मा साहब राजाराम जी अग्रवाल साहब हमारे यूनिवर्सिटी के एग्जाम कंट्रोलर और सीनियर फैकल्टी शास्त्र विभाग को मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूं आपकी कुशल संचालन के लिए अच्छा ये तो अलग है ये जोधपुर कॉन्फ्रेंस है 
ये बैठे सर वो स्वेटर के अंदर इनका भी एक मिनट ये देखो पहले राकेश शर्मा सर ये भी राकेश शर्मा कल हो जाएगा कल कर देंगे कल कर देंगे तो कैसे ये तो चलो ये कि यही है मेरे पास बुद्ध मेले के बाद की दो बाकी मेले के साथ दो आपके कर देंगे आपके साथ हम ही आपके साथ वहीं हम ही कर देंगे वो दिखा लेब में जो मैं हूँ जो भी शर्मा आप फोटो खींच लेंगे और ये बेचारे फोटो दिखाएंगे। जोपुर वन करके प्रेजेंटेशन। ये उठे गए हैं। Yes। मुझे सीक्वेंस बताओ। मेरा फोर्थ है। हम्म? ओला निकली सर। थैंक यू। ये बच्चे सर एक ही हैं। राजा राम सर, राजा राम भाई सर, एक साइन कर देना जरा। फिल्म बना लिया। फिल्म वाला, फिल्म वाला आ गया क्या? हाँ वही तो कुछ साढ़े सात सौ रुपए। लाख खाने से पेन तो दे। दो वर्ष ये तो एक पेन है किसी के पास? आप जमा करा लें। दो वर्ष ये। मेरे को दे ही दे इसको ले आओ तो ना मैंने जी कनेक्ट करो यार वो इस दिनों से ही है हाँ वही तो है उन लोग वीडियो हमारा ऑडियो सिस्टम सारा ऑडियो सिस्टम सारा ऊपर इसलिए एक बार इसमें भी डाल दो तो कुछ नहीं पड़ेगा इससे जो वो पहले आपका लगा ऑडियो पहले आप वाला लगो अच्छे जो सच्चे जो सच्चे जी के लिए तो फिर ये 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 मैडम का ये रोशनी मैडम का रोशनी मैडम का लास्ट में
ट्यूशन स्टार्ट करवाना है यार रश्मि मैडम वो बीसी सबके साथ आ रहे हैं शुभ मैडम सिखाओ चालू करें वो रहने वो कैंसिल
रश्मि मैडम स्टार्ट करवाइए मैम सभी आ गए मैम स्टार्ट करवाइए आप कौन नाम बताइए कौन कौन एन कृष्णैया जी कौन है एन कृष्णैया जी यहीं पर हैं यहीं बैठे हुए हैं तो बताएं सर कौन है मैं उनको देखूं तो सही एटलिस्ट अरे हैं मैडम मैं नाम लेके आप आ जाइए बस सर सर गुजरात बैठे हो मैडम वो नहीं है गुजरात नहीं है वो वहाँ से एन कृष्णैया जी कहाँ हैं यहीं पर हैं एन कृष्णैया जी ताऊ गुजराती सर तो मैं हो रहे हैं जो है और मैम वो है एक बार पूछो ये रोशनी अनिल अनिल रुद्र नहीं हाँ रोशनी अनिल रुद्र हाँ सर कोर्ट परमिशन से गोइंग स्टार्टिंग Good afternoon to all. A warm welcome to all distinguished dignitaries present over here. Now we will start our four plenary session of Komarcon 2023. In this session, we will have total four distinguished speakers from the country. So for this session, First of all, to chair this session, I invite our respected Guruji, Professor Harishankar Ji Sharma sir. He is an eminent Ayurvedic academician who serves as ex-dean of IPGTRA Jamnagar, Gujarat. Currently, he is a president of Japan Hindu Mahasabha at Niago, Japan. We are fortunate to have you, sir. I request you. Please grace the dais. जी सर जी सर आई आल्सो इनवाइट इनोवेटिव एकेडमिक लीडर प्रोफेसर महेश दीक्षित सर प्रिंसिपल एमएमएम गवर्नमेंट आयुर्वेद कॉलेज उदयपुर एस ए गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर he is having teaching experience of more than 25 years and also published several research papers and course book. He also served as ex-dean of academic of Dr. S.R. Rajasthan Ayurved University, Jodhpur. Now I invite Respected Professor N. Krishnaiya Sir, 
ex head of the department of balrog from government ayurved college tirupati as co chairperson presently he is working as rashtriya guru at rav sir has also translated kashyap sahinta in telugu in this brainstorming session we have total four eminent speaker so first i would like to invite our first eminent speaker dr narayan sahani sir our second speaker is professor rakesh sharma from paprola next speaker is professor rahul gujarati sir i also invite our next speaker professor roshni aniruddhan ma'am i would like to invite dr harish singhal sir for welcome our chairperson professor harish shankar ji sharma sir with bouquet of flower i would like to invite once again dr harish singhal sir to welcome our guest of honor professor mahesh dikshit sir i would like to invite dr ramvish sir to welcome our co chair person professor n krishnaiya sir with bouquet of all flower I request Dr. Hari sir to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Narayan Sahani, with bouquet of flower. welcome dr rakesh ji once again i request harish ji sir to welcome professor rahul gujarati sir
Now I would like to invite our first eminent speaker, Professor Narayan Sahane sir from Nadiad, Gujarat. He is expertise in the field of Ayurvedic urology and presently running world first and only Ayurvedic urology center, Brahma Ayurved at Nadiad. He has delivered more than 35 papers as a resource person in various national and international level seminars and workshop. Please, sir. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Dhanvantare Amrut Kalashastaya, Sarvame Vinashaya, Trilokya Nathaya, Maha Vishnave Swaha. O Lord Dhanvantari, please shine something upon us so that we can reflect the world. Honorable Chairperson, my dear Dadaji Professor Harishanka Sharma Sir, Co-Chairman Sir, rest of the eminent speakers on the dais, and yes, the most eminent personalities uh, uh, present at the moment in this hall and students and rest of the delegates. A very good morning to all. Uh, the topic I'm going to present now is Ayurvedic Herological Management of Vega Dharana Janya Udavart with special reference to severe bladder outlet obstruction in pediatric patients and evidence-based approach. I'm going to present some cases of this particular condition. Actually, I'm not a pediatrician, obviously, I'm an uh, Ayurvedic surgeon and uh, an Ayurvedic urologist. We are running world's first and only Ayurvedic urology center in the name of Brahma Ayurved. We are practicing in the field of Ayurvedic urology since almost 21 years. And dealing with many uh, different pathologies, including urethral stricture, bladder outlet, obstruction, interstitial cystitis, then recurrent UTI, multi drug resistant UTI, etc. So the topic is regarding the bladder outlet or bladder neck obstruction. Basically, it's a blockage at the base or neck of the bladder which reduces or stops flow of urine with significant back pressure changes like hydronephrosis and hydrourator. So to understand this particular pathology, first of all, we need to know about the energy which is called as apanvayu, a very crucial energy. Now. The speciality of this energy is very, very crucial as it is mentioned. Apano apanaga shoni basti medha urugo charaha shukrarta shakun mutra garbha nishkraman kriya. So, apanvayu is an energy which is responsible or which governs the physiology of semen, menstruation stools, urine, and fetus. So the speciality of this energy is, this energy is responsible for holding these particular things up to certain limit, dharan. And once that limit is attained, the same energy expels them out, udiran. So this energy is performing both activities, like while having the sexual activity, that semen is held by the apanvayu up to certain limit, and once that limit is attained, the same apanvayu expels it out with force. Same with menstruation, the endometrium is held by this particular apanvayu energy up to almost 28 days. And once that limit is attained, the same apanvayu sheds it off in the form of menstrual bleeding. Same with stools, our intestines are able to hold feces with the help of this apanvayu up to almost 24 hours. And once that limit is attained, the same apanvayu expels them out and we get the urge to motion, to pass motion. Same with fetus, this apanvayu is holding the fetus for almost 9 months in the uterus. And once that limit is attained, the same apanvayu, this energy induces labor pains. Now, as far as urine is concerned, obviously, unless and until almost four to 500 ml of urine is collected in the bladder, we are unaware of that. And once that much quantity is collected in the bladder, we get the urge to pee. Now, once a person enters the washroom, two things occur simultaneously. Actually, our bladder is a bag made up of a muscle. The name of that muscle is detrusor muscle. So that muscle contracts, and at the same time, 
the sphincter, urethral sphincter, which is exactly at the base of the bladder, which relaxes, which is formed by the, by the urogenital diaphragm. So this action, particular action, contraction of the detrusor and relaxation of the external urethral sphincter is called as detrusor sphincter synergia. And the flow of urine starts. Normally, bladder gets empty completely. There is hardly little amount of residue remaining, which is insignificant. Generally, it's nil. So this is how it works. Now, this bladder outlet obstruction, there are different, many reasons or etiological factors behind that. But the most important factor, according to Ayurveda, is the Vegadharan. So when a person, obviously, disrespects that particular urge of urine, that leads to some problems. Now, how it exactly occurs? Just let me quote you an example. Like if we are traveling and uh, by bus and the driver, he doesn't stop. Though the bladder is full and some time passes, maybe one hour. And after that, whenever he hauls and when we pass, when we try to pee, at that time, though the bladder is full, but still the stream of urine is weak, we need to strain to pee at the same time that person hardly get the satisfaction of passing urine, means krute api akusangyata is there. Now, when that person passes urine next time, it is relieved, then it's normal. But the, at that time, as that person holds it with full bladder, that's why the bladder neck becomes little tighter. And this is kind of transient detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. Means though the detrusor muscle is contracting, the sphincter is unable to open up. This is detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. And obviously when a person tries to do it again or does it again and again, this particular thing, vague dharan, that leads to permanent detrusor sphincter dyssynergia or typically bladder or outlet or bladder neck obstruction. There are different symptoms. So I'm going to directly go to the cases. Now, the way we treat this condition, we treat this condition with Uttar Basti, urethral calibration, Anuvasa, Niru and Shir Basti, double voiding. In this, that patient is asked to void urine again after passing urine within 10 minutes of previous voiding. So that significantly reduces the post void residue urine, Avgaha Svet for Vatanuloman and oral medications. The treatment of Uttar Basti obviously is a highly specialized Ayurvedic urological procedure. Just let me show you uh, the video of the, the way we perform Uttar Basti at our institute. Obviously, the procedure has to be conducted under very rigid aseptic precautions because that is the most important part because in urology it is believed that whenever you introduce anything inside urethra or into the bladder, you are going to introduce an infection. So that's why this procedure has to be conducted under very rigid aseptic precautions. Actually, no anesthesia is required, no hospitalization is required. This is absolutely painless procedure. We have managed, we have treated patients of age ranging from 5 years to 96 years in our institute since last 21 years. Until date, nobody has got any problem while performing Uttar Basti. Yes, obviously, we are doing exactly opposite to the natural passage of Hiru, so that's why it has to be very gentle, as gentle as possible. Even the medicine is properly sterilized. Very possible we use disposables. Yes, the most important thing is patient should be at most, at most ease or at most comfort. The whole medicine goes to the bladder and from there it works. In case of female also we do the same way. Initially I used to use that central nozzle glass syringe, but now we are using the same Follies adapter. In, in fact, it's very important that to perform Uttar Basti, one should never ever introduce a catheter or even infant feeding tube into the urethra. So it's very important. Just for the sake of Uttar Basti, that Follies adapter is enough. Now the way we perform the calibration, again this is, this, this is also performed only with that anesthetic gel. There is no need of anesthesia even for doing the calibration. In this way, introduce different size catheters, nilatin catheters into urethra. Now to restore the caliber of urethra, this is necessary because urethra is a collapsible pipe and it has got its own caliber. So to restore the caliber, calibration is required. Now here, like already the Uttarbasti medicine is introduced. After that, we introduce that anesthetic gel and after that we introduce different size disposable nilatin catheters. Now in this case, now this is a patient of just for the demonstration I'm showing this, this, this particular patient is of urethral stricture and this is the last calibration for this patient. Are we introducing? This one is the 20 fringe. There is a standard color code. Yellow is 20, red is 18, orange is 16, green is 14, 
white is 12 and black is 10. So this is last. Now, while introducing the catheter, it has to be as gentle as possible because in neurology, it is believed that erythra is supposed to be the most egoistic part of human body. So one should never ever disrespect erythra by any means. Not only the introduction of the catheter, but while removing it, it should be really very gentle with due respect to urethra. And you can see it is completely bloodless. And I would say with confidence that for more than 95% patients, this particular procedure is bloodless. And even for this procedure, no hospitalization is required. It is an OPD procedure. Now just let me show you some cases. I would say the most challenging case of my career till date, this nine-year-old kid from Ahmedabad, he was suffering. His case details are like this. Typical LUTS, lower urinary tract symptoms. The first was his bladder was so highly distended that literally it was visible two inches above the umbilicus. And he was having that hesitancy, poor flow, incomplete emptying of bladder. And yes, enuresis at the same time, overflow incontinence and constipation and with a very specific history of vague dharan. Uh, he must have heard the discussion, common discussion, generally people discuss regarding the use of washroom. People think that if the washrooms are not neat and clean, one should never use them. And with that impression in the mind, that kid used to start by 7 a.m. for the school from home, and he used to come back by 3 p.m. And he never used washroom for those much hours, continuously for years together. So continuous vague dharan for hours together. And that led to severe kind of bladder outlet obstruction resulting into this. This is his uh, micturating sister urethrogram. In this, they introduced an infant feeding tube and the bladder is filled with the radiopaque contrast and that patient is asked to pee and this X-ray snap is taken. You can see this particular appearance of bladder is called as the spinning top appearance in radiology. And this is diagnostic of posterior urethral walls. Now, the radiological diagnosis first was PUV, posterior urethral wall, and the second one you can see a cut of urethra at the level of urogenital diaphragm at the junction of posterior and anterior urethra. So a very tight structure. This was the radiological diagnosis. First, PUV or tight urethral structure. Now the sonologically. Sonologically, you can see the pre-void was 1081 cc. Just imagine one liter, more than one liter bladder. The normal capacity of bladder at this age is 300 ml. So it was thrice the normal capacity and the post wide residue is 836. With significant back pressure changes like bilateral hydroerythrin and hydronephrosis. And the sonological diagnosis was the neurogenic bladder. His urethral was very poor, the max flow was only 4.2 ml, he could have only 40 ml of urine. Obviously he was advised to go for cystoscopy and visual internal erythrotomy or PUV fulguration as an emergency treatment to preserve the kidneys by two urologists, one pediatric surgeon and one nephrologist. But being single kid of a very rich family, they approached the leading Ayurveda physician of Gujarat, Vaidya Tapan Kumar sir, and then he referred this patient to me. It was very challenging for me first to convince the family and then the kid. But fortunately I could do that I could convince both of them. And then uh, the most important thing in this case is the differential diagnosis. First thing, PUV. That particular appearance, posterior urethral wall, was because of the highly over-distended bladder, that particular spinning top appearance look. Actually, a case of PUV is diagnosed at a very early age, maybe uh, six months, maximum one year. So to be a case of PUV at that age, most unlikely, Urethral structure, tight urethral structure at the level of urogenital diaphragm, that was mainly because of that tightness in the sphincter, the way that kid was holding urine continuously for us together. And without any significant history of spina bifida, spinal surgery, or spinal injury, yes, it wasn't a case of neurogenic bladder. So for me, it was a case of severe bladder outlet obstruction, vague dharan janya udavart. We started his treatment with uttar basti, urethral calibration, anuasan, niruha, shir basti for vatanuloman. Double voiding, Avgahasvet, oral medicines. We started the treatment on 17th of January 22nd. Within eight days of treatment, with, after eight settings of the treatment, you can see the pre void reduced to 480, which was initially 
1081. And the post white reduced to 123, which was 836. Yes, this is possible with higher weight here. Thank you. This is for iron. And the back pressure changes were also significantly improved. And the sonologist is the same. Literally, he called me what exactly you did. And you can see the Euroflowmetry, the Qmax, the max flow rate improved to 11.5 ml. He could write 140 ml after eight days. After 22 days of the treatment, you can see the post-wide residue is only 4 ml, which is absolutely normal. And the back pressure changes were almost completely resolved. So this is definitely possible in our In fact, in so-called conventional urology or modern urology, they, they do not have a promising treatment for this condition. I'm going to present one more case after this. So the flow, again, Euroflow improved back to normal. There is follow-up after six months. Even after six months, you can see the post white residue is only 19 cc. There are no back pressure changes improved completely. The flow further improved to 15.4 ml per second, the Qmax. The residue is only 20 cc. After one year, the post white residue is only again 22 cc. So that kid is maintaining absolutely normal life. Now let me present one more case. This kid, 10 year, six month old kid. Actually, his father is an interventional cardiologist. That kid was suffering with typical LUTS. The main symptom was dysuria, pain especially after passing urine. And this kid was also having the specific history of vague dharan for three continuous years. He, he also used to hold urine for hours together in the school. <coughs> Uh, he was having typical posterior cell walls, and his posterior cell walls were fulgurated at the age of 18 months in Bombay Hospital, Mumbai. In February 23, again he suffered UTI, and again diagnosed with residual POV. And he underwent cystoscopy and residual posterior cell wall fulguration at Bombay Hospital, Mumbai on 11th May 23. But unfortunately, symptoms or LUTS started just after 20 days of the operative procedure. And he, he was advised to go for regular clean intermittent self-catheterization or marital calibration daily using a 10 French catheter. When they performed his next MCU, maturing cyst orthogam on 1st of August 23, the same kind of picture, again a tight structure at the level of urogenital diaphragm, distendal bladder, compromise Euroflow. He, again, he was advised to go for cystoscopy and maybe PU fulguration by the same urologist. And literally, they have booked the ticket for Mumbai. Then suddenly, they got our website. They approached us, and they, they changed their plan. They came to us. We managed that patient with the same treatment. We commenced uh, his treatment on 7th of August this year. We completed on 31st of August with significant clinical improvement. And you can see over here, on 31st of August 23, in ultrasound, the thing is, there is significant hypertrophy of urinary bladder wall is evident. And just three days ago, on 26th of December, the astrologist has clearly mentioned that urinary bladder is normal with walls absolutely normal. Thickness is only 2.9 mm. So even that bladder hypertrophy resolved completely within four months of the treatment. So definitely in Ayurveda we can do this. His recent Euroflow, a very proper, typically bale-shaped graph of Euroflowmetry. And that kid is leading absolutely normal life now. Uh, the last case, thank you. I should say again, this, if this is for Ayurveda, this should be with full strength. Thank you. This patient came to us at the age of 23 years from Australia. Very interesting history. He had an incidence of involuntary passage of urine in the school at the age of almost 10 years in front of everybody, a kid. Just imagine. Everybody laughed at that kid. So obviously that kid scared a lot with fear in the mind that he may pass urine in front of anybody, anywhere. So with that fear, he started holding urine very tightly 
and that led to that is called as embarrassed bladder avoidant pyreuresis, shy bladder syndrome, psychogenic urinary retention or P-phobia. In short, Vegdharan. That led to severe detrusor, sphincter dyssynergia, severe functional bladder outlet obstruction. He was managed, he, actually his father is an industrialist over there in Sydney. So he took him to all possible urologists, neurologists, pediatricians, no improvement at all. Ultimately, after going through many investigations, everything, cystoscopies, ultimately that kid was advised to go for botulinum toxin injection in the bladder neck. This is a routine treatment or the BNI, bladder neck incision surgery. But this particular surgery is, to, is known to cause retrograde ejaculation. So in that, semen, instead of getting out, it goes upwards towards the bladder. So obviously for a young chap of 23 years, it was not recommended. Then they got our site. Actually, the name, the domain of our site is curiosityscripture.com. There is a tab. We also treat in that tab. There is a list of different conditions, urological conditions which we treat. So we manage his condition. Actually, when he came to us, he has to strain a lot with excruciating pain, and he could avoid only 50 ml of urine with that much straining and pain. So I'm with significant bilateral hydronephrosis and hydrator. After 21 settings of the treatment, including Uttar Vasti, Basti, Yog, Pranam, etc., within one week, he was able to avoid 100 ml of urine without pain and straining. After three weeks treatment, he was able to avoid around 300 ml of urine without pain and straining. After that, we discharge him with six months medication and uh, diet and lifestyle guidance. We called him back. So when he came to us for the first time in December 12, you can see the pre void is 17, post void is 6, 50, 660, with significant back pressure changes. When he came back after f six months in June 12, the residue is hardly 50 ml, and the back pressure changes were significantly improved. So as it is well said that, Ayurveda Padeshyesho Vidaya Paramadarha Na Vegaan Dharayet Na Udhirayet In fact, it is believed that passing urine saves your life. One should never ever disrespect the natural urges. Passing urine saves your life. So one should never ever disrespect the natural urge. <laughs> to conclude, uh, as we are practicing in the field of hydrology since almost 21 years, we have patients from almost 21 countries till date, foreign nationals. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that respected honorable, uh, my dear Dadaji, Professor Sharma sir, under his guidance, in 18 we had a team of Japanese doctors to learn basics of Ayurveda and Panchakarma, etc. I was invited to Japan to deliver a lecture regarding Ayurvedic urology. A Japanese urologist, Dr. Hiroi Inam, uh, uh, Dr. Iko Azuma, she visited our institute, and also Dadiji also came to us, to our, to our institute. Many urologists from different countries have visited our institute, right, like from Russia, from Singapore, Egypt, Algeria, to know what exactly Ayurvedic urology means, and they really appreciated the way we are working in the field. The main work is focus on urethral stricture disease, that's the kind of structural obstruction. Along with that, we work on like this uh, bladder outlet obstruction, which is supposed to be a functional obstruction. Along with that, we also work on prostate, uh, interstitial cystitis, recurrent UTI, multi drug resistant UTI, etc. I'm uh, honored and proud to say that I am uh, honorary consultant to the Honorable Governor of Gujarat, and just because of Ayurveda. Yes, sir. Thank you. Here's a small introduction of our institute. Welcome to Brahma Ayurved, Gujarat's first ever multi-speciality Ayurvedic hospital with world-class standards. Founded by Drs. Jui and Narayan Shahane. We have multiple theatres well equipped for urology, proctology, Ayurveda and Panchakarma. For patients staying over, there are multiple beds ranging from common to VIP with special facilities. Guests receive excellent healthy food and access to an on-duty doctor around the clock. 
Here you can receive the best of modern healthcare combined with the age-old wisdom of Ayurvedic medicine. We receive many local and international patients for highly specialized procedures such as the Uttarbasti, an effective cure for urethral strictures, performed in our Ayurvedic urology center, the first and only in India. Brahma Ayurved, follow the most authentic and updated science of life. Thank you for the patient listening. Again, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present this particular area or branch in front of this August gathering. Also, I would like to, I would like to thank organizing chairman, uh, respected uh, Prem Prakash Vyas sir, for inviting me, especially in Comarcom, being a surgeon or urologist. I got this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this informative lecture. Now I would like to invite our next speaker, Professor Rakesh Kumar Sharma sir, Head of PG Department of Balrog, Raju Gandhi, Postgraduate Government Ayurvedic College and Hospital, Paprola, Himachal Pradesh. Sir is having more than 25 years of teaching experience. He is a member of Institutional Ethical and Research Committee and Board and Faculty of Ayurveda in various universities. He has published more than 50 research papers and two monograms. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Respected dignitaries on the dais, chairperson, Professor H.S. Sharma ji, co-chairperson Dr. Krishnaya ji, guest of honor Dr. Tyagi ji, my speaker colleagues, uh, Dr. Narayan ji, Dr. Gujarati ji, and Dr. Madam Roshani Andrul ji, dignitary of the dais, my teachers, Professor Bid Prakash Sharma ji, Professor Avimanyu ji, Professor Sri Krishna Khandal ji, Professor B.M. Singh ji, my friends, Dr. Garak, Dr. Rajgopal ji, and my fellow colleagues and dear student. Firstly, I am very thankful to the team of Komarkon that they give me the privilege the opportunity that I am here in front of you. My special thanks to Professor Prajapati ji, BC of Gujarat, sorry, Rajasthan Ayurveda University, Professor P.P. Bias ji, Chairman, and Dr. Hari Singhal ji. Now, I come on point that from yesterday, we are just discussing advancements and the other things, what is happening in the present scenario and what are the researches are going on for the perspective of our Kumar Vritya. Because if we think that we are the people of Kumar Vritya, anenhi samvarditam itre chikitsanti. The what we are, this is our strength of a Ayurvedic pediatricians. Anenhi sambarditam itre chikitsanti. And what is happening in the present scenario? And I may be differ, the topic may be differ, but this is my opinion and this is our data. And the data and opinion may be differ. What the aim of our all the pedi Ayurvedic pediatricians for the healthy society, for the healthy nations. And then, what are the challenges in front of us that approximate 46% of all maternal deaths and 40% of neonatal deaths happen during labor or first 24 hours after birth. And prematurity, neonatal infections, birth asphyxia, 
And what is our, if we think that 3.5 million babies in India are born too early and 1 million newborns are discharged from air from SNU, these newborns remain at high risk of death, stunting and development delays. Early initiation, 41%. Increase in coverage, we always set a target. We, when we are sitting, when we are going to prepare some policies, we always set targets what we don't achieve the goal. What is lacuna? What is the limitations behind this? And what are the challenges? Those challenges are ignored by our policy makers. So what are the challenges? UNICEF programming around newborn health seeks to reduce inequality of care, strength, health system, and incorporate resilience and risk-informed planning, and with the combination of adequate investment in the most disadvantaged communities and community leaderships. What we can do, what are the challenges? My first point is, I recently says that I apology from the learned speakers, learned uh, our stakeholders, that my data, my thinking may be differ from the other person or you. Okay? This, but what are the challenges? Because we are setting the goal. What we are not achieving the goal? What are lacking? What are the limitations behind this? What are the challenges in present scenario? Either this is nutrition, nutritional insurance, or this is prematurity, immunity, genetic disarray, weather and climate, educational dis disparity, parental lifestyle influence, complex family dynamics, technology and media, identif identify and self-esteem, pharmacotherapy, ethical limited sources, mythology, health and developmental disorder. This is, I think this is the challenges before us. Because again, I am saying that we are the people of Anainhi Sambarditam Itre Chikinsi. We show the parameters, that parameters end with the healthy society, with the healthy nations. And this is the nutritional essence. Antenatal, what is our field? In the science of modern science, that our field starts from after the birth. What in the Ayurveda, our field starts from very beginning when a male and female think about the conceptions. Why? Because what are the antenatal constituencies? An adequate nutrition intake? Government of India and all the state government is starting this nutritional big, nutritional ma, and th these oral things. Because I say that. Before 1990, before, or I can say that before 2000, we are not involved, I, I, department is not involved in that the challenges, what are the challenges problem that initially starts from this and say, uh, that program, NRHM, then RCHS. So the inadequate in, uh, uh, nutrient intake, chronic energy deficiency that are leading to the malnutrition or food diversion, that gestational diabetes and weight management, I think these are the challenges in the antenatal period and in the postnatal prematurity termination of breastfeeding. We always say that you have to start the breastfeeding initially after the, after the birth, immediate after the birth. But when we see the data, that data is promoting not the about 40 to 50 percent or more than 60 percent institutional why government is provide emphasized on institutional institutional delivery that we can start breastfeeding initiates time constraints fatigue hormonal changes and this is emotional and well-being well-being then next is poverty what can leads to poverty influence household food security insufficient child maternal cares or what will happens with the nutritional insurance. Under nutrition, decreased immunity. We always say that immunity, and nobody knows about the immunity before the era of this COVID-19. No person knows about what is the immunity. Only I do, I do the people knows what is this immunity. Then, increased risk of disease. 
In the morning, uh, Dr. B.M. Singh is saying about these are the things about perinatal care, prenatal care, okay? and infections. We always know that the infections leads to hypothermia. Hypothermia leads to infections. Then infectious disease increase energy intakes and again is under nutrition. Second is prematurity. I am not going to each and points. Prematurity, what in the fetal stage, preterm, surgical units, and again, my third point is immunity. What is this immunity? And only emphasize on natural, artificial, natural and artificial. What are the components of immunity? Genetic disarray. Researchers and scientists are now facing the difficulty of identifying strength and limitation of the genomes versus exome sequencing to identify the genetic causes of primary immunodeficiency before making the information available for the potential clinical applications. And you can see from this data that 83% of all rare genetic disease affect the child and 89.6% of childhood rares of disease compromise the nerve system. This is the disarray. And third point, fourth point is weather and climate. Why we always think about lifestyle? Why the people of Ayurveda says that Dhinacharya? Why are we, why we included in the national program? Because this is the strength Ahar, Nidra and Brahmacharya, three pillars of Ayurveda. And without these three pillars, we can't achieve the goal. No nation can achieve the goal with these three pillars of Ahar, Nidra and Brahmacharya. And then, weather and climate. Weather and climate. What, what are the effects of weathers and climates? In the childhood, extreme temperatures. We always say that when the temperature is above 102, 103 degree Fahrenheit, after that, febrile convulsions start. But the convulsion is not there in the adult. Then air quality, we always read and study Bidahi, Guru, Bistambi, Ruks, Avi, Sandhi, Bojani, Seed, Paan, Asansthan, Dhoom, Raj, Atap, Anilay. तो जो भी रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम का हमारा निदान यहाँ पर बताया गया है उसमें कौन कौन से हमारे निदान जो हैं वो उस तो टोटल दीज आर द थिंग्स देन वेक्टर बॉन्ड डिजीज वाटर बॉन्ड डिजीज मेंटल हेल्थ इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन द प्रेजेंट स्टेरियो आफ्टर दिस इरा ऑफ कोविड नाइनटीन बिकॉज इफ द Childhood period, if the, inf if the childhood periods, again, this is a total period, preschool or school period, if affect, mental effect is very torturous. And why these psychological disorders are going on day by day? If what is the effect of this COVID-19 of our mental illness? Then few food security, allergies, infectious disease, indirect, and then adaptation and resilience. Again, you see the impact of climate change on human health. You can see what it can be the severe weather, air pollution, changes in the vector ecology, increasing allergies, water quality impact, and water and food. You can see on the, this data what is the effect of this on the then educational disparity. This is more, we are saying that this state is of high literacy rate or this. What now in the ruler, till date in the ruler area, this educational disparity is going on. Always if we think education is measured through the variety of mean thought the world, including literacy rate, standardization test score, enrollment rate, and graduation rate. By observing some of these form of measurement, we can ascertain a sense of education. What? Higher education leads to increased health literary, literacy which enable children to understand their health problems and become more empowered in the term of. But what are the educational disparity? Socioeconomic inequity, racial and ethnics. We all know these are the challenges in front of us. 
جیوگرافک بہت دور جانا پڑے گا ہمیں ہو سکتا اسکول کے بیچ میں کوئی ندی یا دریا کچھ آتا ہے جیوگرافیکل ایریا دین اسپیشل ایجوکیشن نیڈ دین پیرنٹل انوالومنٹ بائی دا چلڈرنس آر لیکنگ ان دا گورمنٹ سیکٹرس بیکاز وین دا پرسنس وین دا فیملی پرسنس اور ادر پرسنس goes in the government sectors and the private sector, but in the private sectors, parents will more emphasize, more concern of the kids. Then, culture difference. Why this is the culture difference? And I say, the government of India, all concerned with these disparities and day by day, and we need that in the coming years, all disparity will be away from us, from the, our society. Then, parental lifestyle influence. Bahut ek thoda sa kissa aap ko sunata hoon. Koi bahut hota hai ki, kate hai ki children are the more equated. Bahut hote hai. Chote chote bachche hote hai. Jahan par smoking karte hai. Unhe pata nahi hota hai. Jho parents hai bahan par, wo che gay smoking kiya, uske baad unho ne phir usko utha liya. Ki kuch na kuch to isme hai. تو جو پیرنٹل لائف سٹائل ہے وہ بہت ہی انفلوئنس کرتا ہے ان اوور دا لیڈس آف اینڈ سیکنڈ تھنگ از لائف اسٹائل ڈس آڈرس اوبیسٹی استھما اینڈ ڈائبٹیز دین اف وی تھنک اف وی ڈسکس دا پیرنٹنگ اسٹائل اگین دس از مور امپورٹنٹ یو واٹ از دا وے ہاؤ ٹو ٹاک اوور کڈز ہمارا ٹائم ہوتا تھا پہلے جب ہم بات کرتے تھے اور بہت ڈرتے تھے کسی سے بات کرنے میں ہمارے ٹیچرز بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں ابھی تک ہمت نہیں ہوتی ہے بیٹھنے کی ان کے سامنے وہ جو آگے آنے والا ٹائم ہے وہ دیکھتا ہے کہ آپ بات کیا مطلب جو آپ کا آئیڈیا ہے وہ کس حساب سے مطلب وہ اسٹائل کون سا ہے آئیدر یور اسٹائل از پرمیسو ریئرلی گیونس آل انفورس رولس اوور انڈلس چائلڈ ٹو اوائڈ کنفلکٹ آپ کا کس طرح سے ہے بہیویئر پرمیسو اتھارٹیٹیو آپ کو کرنا ہے یہ سیکنڈ از اتھارٹیٹینس اسٹرکٹ رول آپ نے دیکھا ہوگا کہ جو اسٹرکٹ رول ہیں کون سے اسٹرکٹ رول بیکاز وین وی سی تھنک اباؤٹ دا سائیکولوجیکل ڈس آڈر اینڈ وین وی ٹیک دا ایٹیولوجی دس از آئسولیشن انسیکورٹی اور ادر تھنگس وائی دیز تھنگس آر اکرنگ ان اوور سوسائٹی ان اوور کڈز Because mother and father both are in serving and in the morning they left our, their kids in the take care of their secondary caretakers. And I can give an example that when a kid asked for milk, he was slapped and the kid never take the food. He left the milk for three years and he left the milk for three years. Because we have to trace the etiology. And when we trace the etiology, then we can success. Then, next again, this is, and complex family dynamics. Again, this is a challenge in front of us. We emerge from diverse, remarriage, parental conflict. Garbani paricharya. بہت ہے اس میں دیا ہوا ہے فرسٹ منتھ سیکنڈ منتھ تھرڈ منتھ فورتھ منتھ ہمیں کیا کیا کرنا چاہیے کیا کیا اثر ہو سکتا ہے اس کے اوپر ریکوگنائزنگ اینڈ ایڈریسنگ دی چیلنجز از وائٹل فار سیف گارڈنگ چلڈرنس اینڈ دس از اگین دا فیملی ڈائنامکس فیملی فنکشننگ فیملی ریلیشن شپ اینڈ فیملی ایڈجسٹمنٹ اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی اینڈ میڈیا اگین دس از اے بگ چیلنجز اینڈ ان دا کوور ٹائمس آل موبائلس are handed over to their kids, our kids, for the education, for the online classing. What happens can pose various challenges for children when not used in a balanced and responsible manner. Important to acknowledge that technology and media can have both positive and negative impact on children development and the key to find a healthy balance. These are some problems we are facing that steep distribution, negative influence, desensitization, digital device, privacy, reduce quality family times, social medias are challenges. Pahle, 
हमारे घर होते थे सभी शाम को बैठ के बात करते थे शेयर करते थे अपनी बातें आज का ये टाइम आ गया है कि घर में यदि चार मेंबर हैं तो हो सकता है वहाँ पर छः मोबाइल होंगे कम से कम दो एक्स्ट्रा मोबाइल वहाँ पर पड़े होंगे कि किसी का खराब हो जाए तो नहीं दूसरा मोबाइल हम उठा लेते हैं उसके लिए ठीक है बिकॉज दिस इज नो हैपनिंग इन दिस सिनेरियो आइडेंटिफिकी आइडेंटिटी एंड सेल्फ स्टीम मुझे अपना है मैंने ये बनना है परंतु उसमें क्या हो रहा है फिर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड एड्रेसिंग दी चैलेंज इज क्रूशियल फॉर नर्चरिंग ए चाइल्ड हेल्थी डेवलपमेंट प्रमोशन ऑफ डाइवर्सिटी इंक्लूसिविटी एंड सेल्फ एक्सेप्टेंस इज आल्सो ए पैरामाउंट इन गाइडिंग चिल्ड्रन टूवर्ड्स ए मोर कॉन्फिडेंट एंड रेजिलियंट साइंस आइडेंटिफाई एंड सेल्फ स्टीम सॉरी डेंटी एंड सेल्फ टीम दैट एकेडमिक एंड अचीवमेंट प्रेशर से अभी सर सुबह हमारे टीचर्स श्री कृष्ण खांडल जी बात कर रहे थे बहुत जो हमारे कोचिंग सेंटर खुल गए हैं बहुत प्रेशर उसके ऊपर हो गया और हम सुनते रहते हैं कि हर एक दिन हर एक तीसरे दिन हर एक हफ्ते में किसी ने सुसाइड कर लिया कोई कोचिंग सेंटर में तो यू कैन फील कि हाउ मच प्रेशर क्यों हम अपनी इच्छा को जो है उनके ऊपर थोप रहे हैं मैं देखता हूँ थोप रहेगा हर एक सोचता है कि मेरा बेटा जो है या बेटी डॉक्टर बने मेरे बेटी इंजीनियर बने और अच्छा करे वट दे आर नॉट टीचिंग दिस तो वट इज हैपनिंग डिप्रेशन एंड अल्टीमेटली दीज स्टेप्स मेंटल हेल्थ चैलेंजेस लैक ऑफ पॉजिटिव रोल मॉडल्स बॉडी इमेज एंड मीडिया फंक्शन peer pressures and social composition and you can see the negative and positive effect of identity of these children and science identify process in science of interventions next is pharmacotherapy pharmacotherapy in children present new challenge compared to the adult either this is acceptability or there is availability or what are the challenges that regulatory agencies now require more extensive pediatric testing to ensure that drugs are safe or effective in the children we always like when we think about the drugs this is available acceptability and third thing is if we doing if we giving in exact dose or not then these are the pharmacotherapy we always say in every conferences in every continuum medical educations ki ayurveda is lacking from the research ayurveda is lacking from the presentations what now in the present scenario it is all due to you are all the stake our students are the stakeholder of ayurveda and stakeholder of arab society and now in the days we are going this we are that going our limitations lack of research ethical considerations and then you can say age related variability growth and malnutrition limited drug testing formulations and then these are the classification you saw next is ethical and legal issues you all know about these are the challenges in front of us for the research purposes ethical considerations again child welfare services children with disability child right to participate juvenile justice child marriages limited resources again this is the challenge for us that the limited resources and again last is the not second last is the mythology and use of the mythology in children health care can be both for a challenges and opportunity depending on how it to be approach mythology stories पहले ऐसे करते थे अब ऐसे कर रहे हैं कौन कौन से होने चाहिए और एक केस मैं आज तक अपनी लाइफ का कभी नहीं भूलता हूँ जो उसकी दादी थी वो पेशेंट को लेके आई हुई तीन चार साल पहले की बात थी और मदर अंदर नहीं आ रही थी मदर वो सामने विंडो के इसके डोर के ऊपर खड़ी हुई थी और वो पूछ रही थी भैया वो क्या कहने हैं तो मैंने कहा कि आप कौन है कहते नहीं दादी हूँ मैं तो मैंने कहा नहीं इसको माँ को बुलाइए उसकी माँ को बुलाया तब उसको पूछा कि तुम बाहर क्यों खड़े थे तो उसने ये पाँच छः साल पुरानी बात है तो कहते कि नहीं दादी ना इसकी दादी कहती है कि माँ का दूध जहर होता है 
اور وہ نہیں پلانا چاہیے اسٹل وی آر گوئنگ آن لیونگ آن دیز ایریا دن دا رولر ایریا اینڈ وٹ از دا آور وی کین سی تھے ایمفیسائز وی ہیو ٹو ایمفیسائز ان دا سوسائٹی ناٹ ان دا پرزینٹ ان دا اربن ایریا وٹ وی ہیو ٹو ٹوٹل اماؤنٹ ٹو دیٹ ایریاز آف اربن ایریاز ویئر دیز آر دیز ٹائپس آف دا ریلیجیس بلیف دیز ٹائپ آف میتھس دس از اسٹگ میڈیسن آر گوئنگ آن اینڈ ہیلتھ کنسرنس یو آل نو دیز آر دا ہیلتھ کنسرن اینڈ دیز آر دا وی کین سی ان دا مارننگ آورس ڈاکٹر راج گوپال ہیز پروفیسر راج گوپال ہیز گیون دا ڈسکشن آف دس نیورولوجی ڈسکشن اینڈ وٹ آر دا اسکوپ یو اینڈ دیز آر دا اسکوپ دیر آر مور یو کین ایڈ ان دا مور اسکوپس دیٹ گربنی پریچریا نوجات شیشو پریچریا ستنے پان بیادک سمتو سنسکار دن چریا ریتو چریا رکشا کرم ارسائن تھیرپی اینڈ تری اپستم آہار ندرا اینڈ برہم چریا یو کین سی دس از دا ماسو ماس پریچریا گربود کر بھاو اینڈ گربھ ستھاپک درب نوجات شیشو پریچریا ستنے پان بیادک سمتو اینڈ سنسکار اینڈ دین these are the din charya this is the ritu charya status of dosha and raksha karma or sign therapy and these are the three pillars of major role to complete the ahar nidra and brahmacharya if we are taking energy how we can consume this energy in the in the present scenario brahmacharya and this is the conclusion that scope of pediatric health lies in its ability to provide a personalized personalized preventive and integrated approach contributing to a more comprehensive and patient centric model of health care for the children while emphasizing the importance of early childhood development unicef reinforced that early childhood is not only the time when the brain develops rapidly but a critical window of opportunity for establishing child immunity and therefore the foundation of good health and optimal productivity in the futures and the, this is about the ahar that important quote by dr koop no disease can be cured unless supplemented by all and ma- madam subha ye baat bhi kar rahe the madam kalpana patel ji bhi baat kar rahe the pathe sati gadar se ki maushad nidhi sevani aur dusra ek aur quotation di ki jo hamare pathe hote hain wo bhi apathe ja pathe bhi ho jate hain usme kaun sa tha پتھیم پتھو نے پیکتم یت جوکتم من سے پریے یت سے پریم پتھیم چکتم ماترا پال دیش بھومی دے گون دشانترم دن لیہن کرم اینڈ ان دا دن چاریا مائی لاسٹ کوڈ اس سیکنڈ لاسٹ ایوری چائلڈ ہو اس بورن انڈر نو میٹر وٹ سرکمسٹانسز اینڈ نو ون نو میٹر بٹ پیرنٹس وٹ دا پوٹینشلی آف ہیومن بینگ از بورن اگین اینڈ ان ہیم ٹو ونس مور اینڈ ایچ آف اس اٹ از اوور ٹیریفک ریسپانسبلٹی ٹو ورڈس ایون دا ہیومن لائفس اور ہم جب بھی کبھی بھی لیبر روم میں جاتے ہیں آپ کے ساتھ بھی ہوتا ہے ہمارے ساتھ بھی ہوتا ہے کہ کیا ہوا میل ہوا فیمیل ہوا ہم کبھی اس کو تو ہمیں پتہ ہی نہیں ہوتا ہے میل ہوا یا فیمیل ہوا بیکاز وٹ از دا اوور ٹیریسپانسبلٹی اینڈ ایٹ دا لاسٹ از ایٹنگ ہیلدی اینڈ اسٹیئنگ ایکٹیو از great way to stay connected to yourself and your higher power whether that is god the universe or simplify your own internal system physical mental emotional and spiritual this is our strength physical mental emotional and spiritual to become clogged and bogged down by lethargy and unnatural substances and at the last is an avila so bukt se paripagya sukhinch srisht bin mutar vat tum sharira se ch lagvam su prasann indriya ch tum sukh swapnam prodanam vol varan ayusham lafe soman se sam agnita vidyat arogyam lingani viprite viparyam this is our responsibility terrific responsibility and this be be i end with my point and thank you again thanks to rajasthan ayurved university and very much thanks to professor prajapati ji vice chancellor of rajasthan ayurved university and the <coughs> organizer dr Pr- and dr prem prakash bhaj ji and dr hari singh ji and specially thank to all the listener those who have listened me thank you thank you so much thank you very much sir for enlightening us with this topic Now I invite Professor P.P. Vyas Ji, sir, Organizing Chairman of Kumarcon 2023. Honorable Dias, with your permission, we have an opportunity to honor our proud partner who is our pr- proud partner you will see now 
I humbly invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Professor Pradeep Kumar Ji Prajapati, Sir, on the dais, and our proud partner, Dabur India Limited. And on behalf of Dabur India Limited, I invite Dr. Durga Prasad Ji, Senior Marketing Manager at national level on the dais. <coughs> we express our gratitude. <coughs> we express our cordial gratitude to the Dabur India Limited, who is our solo event partner. So uh, I invite Dr. Durga Prasad Ji, sir, uh, and I request uh, our uh, chairman of the session and uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to welcome uh, Dr. Durga Prasad Ji. <laughs> I request our Vice Chancellor sir, and uh, Professor Harishankar Sharma sir, to honor Dr. Durga Prasadji with a commendation certificate and a memento. Dabur <laughs> India Limited is providing Swarn Bhasma free of cost since October 2016, the first Ayurveda day on which we have launched the Swarn Passion program. Also, Dabur India Limited is <laughs> contributing a lot in conducting various activities like alumni meet and other national uh, conferences, seminars, workshops. So we are so grateful to the Dabur India Limited. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Dr. Rashmi Sharma. Now I would like to invite our next speaker, respected Professor Rahul Kujrati, sir. Currently he is working as head of the department of Balrog, Bharti Vidyapit, Pune. He is having more than 22 years of teaching experience, published more than 35 research papers in various index journals. He is one of the member of National Neonatology Forum of India and also recognized as a trainer by National AIDS Research Institute for training in pediatric HIV. To complete it with the stipulated time. We are working a lot on respiratory diseases and uh, we focus on treatment of respiratory diseases but we have a few shortcomings. We are failing somewhere because we are still not able to control complete respiratory diseases, the recurrence of those. We have slightly drive, diverted from our basic principles which are there. We first need to know when we are treating respiratory diseases, we should not correlate them with a specific system in Ayurveda because Ayurveda itself is a holistic system. Even if we try to, we, what we are doing now is we are 
limiting respiratory diseases to pranavas rotas while treating or contributing or managing both the things we forget that pranavas rotas is just not limited to the lungs itself if we go for that we have pranavas srotas adam the mulasthan of pranavas srotas is rudai and anavas pran uh, and mahasrotas what mahasrotas means is antakoshto mahasroto this is specified by vagbhata so all the gi tract and the organs inside the uh, kosht had to be considered as mahasrotas and the treatment for them is to be treated as shwas vyadhi chikitsa now we have been seeing that what shwas vyadhi chikitsa is it is not just svedan and snehan it is also shodhan karma it is also ahara it is also dosha shaman chikitsa it is also uh, what we call it as uh, uh, avayav uh, balavardhan chikitsa because the shwas chikitsa udgama sthan itself is a shwas itself is called as pitta sthan samudbhava the treatment protocols for the respiratory ailments are very tricky we consider it to be very easy but it is very tricky because the respiratory ailments they are dependent on both doshas the kapha dosha and the vata dosha both have a typically opposite type of treatment protocols we have to implement both of those very judiciously the therapies should be vata and kapha specifying in nature exhibiting properties which also improve di uh, digestion and metabolism that means we need more of uh, agnid sandipaniya aushadi also this will help this helps not only will this also helps in restoring the normal physiology of vata the treatment should cover not only the respiratory system but it should also encompass the digestive system which we are failing now even in the recent researches we are more focusing on treatment of the lungs and that respiratory passage alone we can classify the treatment of respiratory system into three parts one is the local therapies like nasya dhumapan herbal aerosols which are being used or have studied a lot nowadays swedan therapy yoga procedures like pranayam anulom vimlom kapal bhati etc systemic therapies like shodhan chikitsa and shaman chikitsa and rasayan therapies which would act as a a punarbhav chikitsa how can we relate shwasa pranava srotas that is the lungs of the respiratory system with the digestive system we can see for two diseases for example at this moment if we go for kasa chikitsa or the kasa uh, samprapti it already starts with adap pratihato vayu that means the apan vayu gets uh, vitiated it acquires the gati of udana vayu so apan vayu from the gi tract or the lower part of the uh, koshta and udana vayu in the upper respiratory tract and second this disease where we can see again what i spoke of it was shwasa vyadhi where it starts the utpat utpatti sthan of that vyadhi is pitta sthan that is the grahani the amashe third vyadhi where i would like to speak on it is raja ekshma we have four major types of raja ekshma one of them is vishamashan janya raja ekshma where the pathology occurs the pathogenesis occurs in the gi tract but the abhivyakti sthan the symptoms which are seen they are of the respiratory system similarly in kapha jagrahani it is we find a lot of uh, symptoms like kasa shwasa kshata these are seen in kapha jagrahani so the respi according to ayurved the respiratory system or the mahas uh, the pranava srotas should not only be limited up to the lungs but it has to have some role of the digestive system also now when we go for the treatment we look first for the shodhan chikitsa and we are as rajgopal sir already spoke in the morning that we have a lot of limitations for implementing shodhan chikitsa in children and we at our institute we are unable to give vaman chikitsa because it is contraindicated but instead of virechan we go for anuloman and sramsan and also we implement a lot of basti chikitsa in pediatric practice in shaman chikitsa we can use hingul pippali dalchini that is uh, cinnamomum 
which all are these from the piperaceae family and researches have shown that these augment the immune responses and act as emulsifying agents to improve capillary blood circulation and increase gut function. Now increasing or improving the gut function itself is going to enhance the respiratory function. Sorry. Okay. Now these are some pu published works on the Shaman Chikitsa in, of the treatment which are being used in uh, the treatment of the respiratory ailments. They have shown that Indukanta Kashai, then Dashamula Katutraya Kashai, these are helpful in treating pulmonary mycosis, a fungal disease. They have been already, the drugs have already been used and proven antifungal in according to the modern medicine. Even drugs like Gandhak Rasayana can be used and they can act on a number of fungal species where they can inhibit the growth of fungal species. Then these are where we can use a lot of ginger and um, other drugs from the piperaceae family like the mariche, like pippali, where these drugs are known or they have alkaloid known as piperine, which improves its bio, the bioavailability of other drugs which are combined when giving these medications to the, uh, treat these ailments. Another study which was conducted in during the COVID period, it has shown that Adathoda Vasika, that is Vasa, it attenuates and increase uh, it attenuates increased airway inflammation, levels of transforming growth factor, and improves the overall survival rates in the subjects with pulmonary fibrosis. It has also got a, a property of improving the lung functions of patients who have got pulmonary fibrosis. It also reduces the viral load in the viral cells infected with SARS-CoV-2. Apart from this systemic treatment, we can go for the local therapies which include nasya and aerosols. This is a recent article published in JAIM uh, which has shown how nasya works, how the effect of nasya are seen. We are nowadays focusing a lot on aerosol therapies. Many trials have been carried out. One of the trial which showed, which used shiristwak and nagarmotha and tulsi leaves, it has shown that they are quite effective in reducing the or improving the symptoms of respiratory distress and also um, tamakashwas. The nebulizing formation of aqueous extracts of shirish bark in a specific dose which has been mentioned over here, it showed a quite good response on the smooth muscles not only of the respiratory system but also of the GI tract. So the basic intention of using beta adrenergics by the modern medicine, we can replace them by Ayurvedic medicines which are lesser toxic I would say because the toxicity of each and every drug has not yet been studied. They are either non-toxic or they are lesser toxic. They are, they are easily acceptable by the community. So an aerosol preparation used of Shirishtvak can certainly help and also it is a Katu Tikta in Ras which helps in uh, pacifying kapha and vat both. These are multiple trials which have been registered by the central trial uh, by the central trial registry of India, where number of drugs are being used. We have the uh, drona pushpi, we have coleus aromaticus that is vacha, we have uh, bharangi arka, we have tambul patra arka, so many things even. Uh, Kantakari Arka, they have been, a recent study has been published and a lot of work has been done at Banaras Hindu University also on uh, using aerosol fr prepared from Kantakari. Aerosols certainly have a good role, but they are locally treating um, treatment modality 
and it is going to relieve the symptoms, not cure the samprapti. A meta-analysis was carried out on 24 published works of different treatment modalities which have been implemented to treat respiratory diseases. Of these three, three were found to be exclusively worked on Shodhan therapy. See how researches have been carried out till now. They were not holistic. They are mostly limited to one part of the treatment. Three of these, they are exclusively focused on Shodhan therapy. Uh, sorry, Shodhan and Shaman therapy. Four are focused on using only adjuvants of Ayurvedic medicine. One study focused on plain Shaman Chikitsa. One on Shaman Chikitsa with an therapy associated with Pranayam. And 13 studies only on Shaman Chikitsa. It was found that if the treatment, all these treatments are being augmented with each other, it can give a better result. So treating respiratory ailments with a single modality of just Shodhan Chikitsa or just Shaman Chikitsa or just local therapies or just yoga, it hardly helps. It might help in a short term basis, but on a long run, it hardly helps. They recur again and again. So it has to be an holistic treatment. Now when we say, how can we relate the lungs and the GI tract? The modern medicine, no, it doesn't relate. But if we go deep into the embryological analysis, yes, we can find some uh, evidences that the GI tract and the respiratory tract, they can be related to each other. According to Ayurveda, both the organs, they are developed from asruja. The fufus, they are developed from asruk fein, whereas the GI tract comes up from the asruk prasad and shleshma prasad. So they have one thing in common, that is the asruk. And that might be one developmental part. So a problem or a disease of asruk, a disease of rakta, at the time of development of these organs can create or can make both the organs more much weaker and each any disease of one system can affect the another system. Even the modern medicine has shown that during embryology, if embryology is studied properly, we can see that the GI tract and the uh, respiratory tract, they start developing in the say third to sixth week of gestation. And both these, they are derived from the mesoderm and the endoderm. So, a developmental anomaly or a developmental problem in any of the organ at the same time can result into developmental problem of another system deriving, being derived from the same lineage at that time. Another researchers have shown that the gut, uh, that the bacteria in the gut they are related to the bacteria. They promote the bacteria to grow in the respiratory tract also. So dysbiosis in the GI tract can affect the bacterial growth in the respiratory tract. So a change in the gut bio, uh, bi a microbiome can alter the respiratory microbiome. The gut microbiome is responsible for some immunity of our body. And if that is changed, similarly, the respiratory microbiome would change and it would hamper the respiratory immunity. These are some other researches which have been carried out, which have been found that it is not only the, uh, the respiratory immunology, but also the gut microbiome has got some role to play in patients with COPD also. So this is what I have already spoken about. A dysbiosis can result from poor diet. Uh, dysbiosis, another system, uh, digestive issue, can affect the respiratory system also. And it can result from a poor diet, stress, or a long-term use of uh, antimicrobials. So what scopes do we have for Ayurveda? We have a lot of uh, researches and improvements which have come up in the respiratory treatment protocols and modalities. 
but still they are not complete as yet till, till date today. They have their own limitations. What do we have? What do we have to offer to the world today? We can have a best therapy of a holistic approach. Just not local treatment. The modern medicine focuses more on local treatment. It would use anti tissues, it would use anti allergics, it would use interleukins, it would use uh, aerosols, it would use product, uh, drugs that enhance and stimulate our expectoration. We don't have just to focus on, or we don't have, we don't need to replace their drugs with our drugs. We need to change our approach toward the modern med uh, towards the treatment of modern medicine, uh, respiratory ailments. One, we can indulge in local treatment. Yes, we can give them Nasya, we can give them Swedan, we can give them Snehan. We can give them Shaman Chikitsa. We have to give in all respiratory systems which are of chronic origin, we have to go for Shodhan. And I, in my personal practice, go for Asthapan and Anuasan Basti regularly who have come up with long-term or chronic respiratory diseases. And holistic approach of all these can cure, at least it can prevent frequent attacks of the respiratory ailments. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your instructive lecture. Now I invite our next speaker, respected Professor Roshni Aniruddhan, ma'am. Presently, she is the head of the department of Komar Bhutya at Government Ayurved Co College, Tiruvanthapuram. She has 21 years of clinical experience in managing various pediatric disorders. For her remarkable contribution in the field of Ayurvedic pediatrics in the year 2019, she is awarded with Atreya Award by Government of Kerala. Very warm. Good afternoon to one and all. I know it's very late for lunch. So, it's procedure-based therapies in the management of myopathies. Uh, it's special reference to Duchenne muscular dystrophy, especially the Kerala style of Panchakama procedures. The most perplexing field when rega regarding a pediatrician. A disease which has not yet surrendered to any of these padis. So, uh, but patients are rushing for an Ayurvedic pediatrician because it's only from there does they are, they are getting a bit relief. So, uh, regarding the myopathies, muscular dystrophy the most common, then the congenital myopathies, mitochondrial myopathies, inflammatory myopathies and all. Now, targeting directly on the muscular dystrophy, even though the DMD is the most common, we do find the limb girdle, especially uh, which is also found in females as well, then congenital myopathy and all. So, as I told, DMD is the most common with the characteristic progressive muscle weakness, especially concerned uh, with that proximal muscle group. And the hypertrophy of the calf muscle is that. So, there is an alteration in the translational reading frame of mRNA and the truncated dystrophin molecule is noted leading to the classical presentation. So, uh, we are trying to analyze this disease in an Ayurvedic platform. So, we should be knowing that in contrast with the normal myofibrils, uh, uh, normal muscle, there is an inflamed hypertrophied muscle in the first stage of the disease, later surrendering to a muscle wasting, then replaced by the fatty tissue and, uh, and fibrotic tissue. So there is an initial stage of inflammation which is going on in the muscle tissue. So later surrendering and later getting deep, uh, replaced with the fat and the fibrous tissue. So the inflammation in muscular dystrophy, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, has been targeted in many of the research purposes. So uh, we should also be considering that in framing an Ayurvedic protocol. Usually it starts by the age of five years by walking problems, later uh, they, they, may not, they may need a help for walking and later limited lower limb use and later surrendering to respiratory issues and respiratory failure. 
So the classical treatment which is available now is the physiotherapy, that too a limited physiotherapy, no overuse and no underuse. If the muscle is overused, the dystrophy is more, and if it's not used, again it's uh, surrendering. So orthopedic measures and even surgical release, surgical measures like release of contractures, then for the facial scapula and all wiring a scapula is also done. So we have to incorporate the physiotherapy measures in managing our, in, in doing our management protocol also. So simple child-friendly physiotherapy measures, which should be advised because this should be continue for the lifelong. So it should be child-friendly. This is the physiotherapy unit of our department. We know that it's going to progress from the lower limb to the upper limb and then directly in going to involve the respiratory muscles as well. So uh, enough caution should be given for the upper, uh, upper girdle also. Again, that's gait training exercises. When the baby is having a repeated falls, and they find it difficult to climb up from the sitting position. Usually they succumb to a bedridden posture or they succumb, they, they tend not to walk. So it's our duty to maintain that gait and give a gait training exercise regularly. This unway mobility trainer is of great help with the, with the purchase of an unway mobility trainer in our physiotherapy unit. I think it has contributed a lot in providing uh, effective physiotherapy for these DMD patients. This, in this unway mobility trainer, we can nullify the weight of the patient. We can use that, uh, it's an, uh, we can nullify the weight of the patient by holding it up and then use a gait trainer for giving uh, enough gait training. So, so the ambulatory phase can be uh, regulated with this. If we can use it with a uh, physiotherapy treadmill, it is much more better. The use of physiotherapy treadmill is that the lower speed can be adjusted very low, like 0.1 kilometer per hour. So it is, will be easy for the child to give a gait training. Usual uh, treadmills will be having a minimum speed like three or four kilom uh, two or three kilometer per hour. So this physiotherapy treadmill will be much more used. This is Tanway mobility in use for training a DMD child. Calipers are given. All protective measures are made so that we are nullifying the weight of the patient and then training him to walk. So regarding the Ayurvedic view, it's a genetic cause. So Bija Bija Bhaga Aveva Dushti is the, and it's a Sannipadiga Dushti, that Vishama Sannipada Avastha is uh, fluctuating in every moment. So it's our duty to do an effective Vigalpa Samprapti before planning the treatment each and every day. Vitiated Kaba is uh, causing an Avarana to the Vyanavayu, and you should also see that a Thadupaga is going on without any control. So vitiated Pitta is also causing, is a culprit over there, and especially in the Thadu level. So we should consider it as an unique Vyada Vyadi, where the Avarana and Thadukshaya is happening at the same time. So the Srodhasas involved in the initial phases are Mamsavas Rodas and Venavas Rodas. And great, uh, later in the later phases, the Pranavas, Rodas, Astivas, Rodas also get involved. Rogamarga is Bakya and Mathyama, uh, Rogamarga. So it's a bit more, the prognosis is a bit more worse. For framing a management protocol, in the initial phases, the Amavastha, which is uh, there existing at the Dadu level, should be addressed. And we should be addressing the Medovarthi for Medovarthi there, which can occur. And the kapavarana of the vada should be addressed effectively and with bearing in, in mind that there is a pitta underlying, pitta vritti also underlying. So even though it feels like the lakshanas won't feel, give you an impression that it's a pitta vritti underlying, but if you give a sveta directly that uh, CPK levels will rise like anything. So we should uh, be cautious of the pitta vitiation. 
So in the initial phases, it looks like the Sampraapti of Uriastamba, where Sleshma Medo Pavanama Matyartha Sanjita. So in the initial phases, we can adopt the treatment principle of Uriastamba as well. Uttara Uttara Dhadus are later vitiated, and uh, Aknimandya Dhadu level is uh, with, in, with the involvement of deeper Dhadus as well. So in the initial phase, our management protocol should be Amapajanam, Srodo Shodhanam, Kapha Avrita Vada Shamanam, with due importance to Pitta as well, and restricting the dad levels of Dadupaka. So internal medicine should be having the unique Deepana Pajana combined concept. So the drugs which we use in our practice is Panchakola Churna, Hinguva Jadi Churna or Shaddarana Churna, depending upon that scenario. And we usually include Vilwadi Guliga, in cases where Kaba is dominant or Dushi Vishari Guliga where Pitta is dominant because of the concept of deeper Radhugadama having a Visha Dushi Visha outlook over that. So Belastabana or Ojastabana drugs like Intuganda, Avarana Shamana drugs like Kashaya, uh, Ashtavargan Kashaya or Sahajaradi Kashaya it can be used uh, depending upon the clinical phases. And other drug combinations which we use are Ayaskridi, which is uh, narrated in the Premeha Chigilsa. Devadarvyarishtam is giving very good clinical results in the management of DMD. And Gugulu preparations like Vyoshadi, and again to add with Shiva Guliga, with the Kanmada Rasana is good, we are giving very good results. So coming to procedure-based therapy, which I am supposed to talk on. When this Sanipada Dosha Dushti is the, when with an increasing Thadu Paga, this Pitta should be saluted first. So, uh, because any Sveda Karma will be uh, provocating the Pitta and increasing the Thadu Paga. So, during this Amavasta, it should be Amavada, Amahara, and again, controlling all the Tridoshas. So, Kashaya Dara is given in importance in the initial phases. And also similar is Dhanyamla Dara. Then you can select for the, go for Dashamulak Shira Dara if Pitta is more. If very sudden increase of CPK is there in the initial phases, it will be Dashamula Shira Dara can be your first option. Usually the underlying inflammatory conditions will be uh, considered under this. And uh, all this congenital myopathy, if you are reading, uh, regard, dealing with congenital myopathy, for sure, Dashmula Shiradara, Dashmula Karaskara Shiradara should be our first option. Then, regarding that, then coming to next phase of Kabhavada Shamana. Udvartana is the usual option which I have found, but uh, you should think of Utsadhana as well. Sasneha Kalkena Utkarshanam is Utsadhanam. So a churna mixed well with Dravadravya. You can select a Dravadravya upon up your choice. It can be a Kashaya. Or if you need a bit more Srodoshodhana, it can, can be a Dhanyamla. Or you can use, select for Takra as well. Takra is known to have less skin irritation than Dhanyamla. But if you are selecting for a Takra, make sure that is Prabhuda Amlatva is there. That fermented for two days. If you are planning for a Dukshana Utsadhana, you can, uh, it's better you mix the Churna with that Dravadravya alone. After uh, doing a Dukshana Utsadhana for like, uh, for Amapajana, you can slowly introduce a bit more Snehana in that Ishat Sniktam. You can make it Ishat Sniktam by adding a little bit of oil. But make sure that the oil selection over there should be having a Srodoshodhana property, like Lakshadi or Sahajaradi, which ensures a Srodoshodhana as well. This is a picture of Utsadhana which is going on. This uh, powder mixed with the Dravadravya, this uh, Ruksha Utsadhana going on. Punnagadi Utsadhana uh, is an Anupuda Yoga which is widely used in the management of DMD. The drugs are easily available. Uh, even if you skip a one or two drug, it's okay, I think, because the, even though this is the classical uh, yoga, this is the uh, Anupuda Yoga, even some alterations are also used well. This is very effective in uh, managing that initial phase of Kabhavarana. All these drugs are mixed in equal quantities, mixed uh, can be uh, diluted in Tanyamla and then used as Utsadhana. 
Other drug options are Kolakula Thadi Churna, which I think it's very familiar with, or even dried Yava Kolakula fried dry fried Yava Kolakula can be used, or Kulata alone can be used. But Medhika Kulata and Shata Pushpa Churna is also a very nice combination and cost effective as well. Then in later phases of DMD, like uh, if the baby is bedridden and all, uh, better to omit these, these much Kabavada Shamana drugs like Kolagalatadi or these much Tikshna drugs and better clinical results are more with Jeevantyadi Churna which is narrated in Shosha Chil, Rajekshma Chilsa. And even you can think of Goduma Churna or Navadhanya Churna for Sadhana in such cases when the baby has lost the capacity to walk and is bedridden. So after completing the Rukshana therapy, we should be bearing in mind that Rukshana, too much Rukshana is also harmful because of the Vadavrti, Thadukshaya happening over there. So even though the full Amalakshanas are not over, better you add a bit Snehana, which is having a Shrodashodana property for fear of uh, Vadavrti. So uh, for such conditions, the best, best Snehana to be included is Erenda Thaila because Erendathaila is the only snehana which is indicated, which indicated to be used in ama conditions. It's, it's indicated to be used in ama vata as well. So for external and internal use, different formulations of Erendathaila will be the best drug to be used. So uh, for internal administration, we usually use Gandharvas Erenda, or we can go for Sajaradi Thaila as well, mixed with the Kashaya as Anupanam. Shira Kashaya with uh, Ashtavarga, Arjuna, Prishnaparni and Leshuna is having very good clinical results. When you are going to, ma going to face a cardiomyopathy, when the baby is in the 20s, uh, we are afraid that our cardiomegaly has set in, then this uh, Ashtavarga, Arjuna, Prishnaparni and Leshuna, Kshirapaga, we use it effectively. And regarding the internal administration, next to Erenda Thaila, our drug of choice is usually Rasna Deshmula Krita. Rasna Deshmula Krita, uh, in Kerala, Aushadi Pharmaceutical is supplying it to us, but it's also available uh, in online purchase. The Rasna Deshmula is a wonderful yoga having that Sodashomadana Amahara properties and especially tar targeting that Mamsa Thadu. So, indicated in the Kasaroga Adhikarana of Ashtangardaya. Again, Shatpala Krida and Danvandara Krida indicated in the Premeharoga Adhikarana is also having very good results. But always superiority goes to the Rasna Deshmula Krida itself. Coming to external Snehana, that is initial Snehana, that is uh, Abhyanga. We had, stain, uh, we had initiated the Snehana by coupling a thai, Ayanda Thaila with the Utsadhana in the initial level, then coming to pure Snehana, that is Abhyanga. Murivanna, the traditional yoga uh, of Kerala, is having wonderful results in managing that inflammatory conditions of muscles. Uh, so when the CPK is uh, climbing, uh, the drug of choice, in spite of any change, it's Murivanna and Murivanna alone. Then comes uh, the other Shrodosh Thailas, which are having the Shrodoshodana capacities, like Lakshadi, Shadahuadi, Sahajaradi, and the last comes the Bella Thaila. After introducing the Dabhyanga, now we should think of Svedana. But Sveda Kriya should be done with caution as underlying muscle inflammation is the, it's a vicious cycle which is going on. So uh, different portly Svedas can be thought of and uh, as we should resort a bit Rukshana, even though Svedana, we should be resort a bit Rukshana because of that Kabha Avarana. Churna Pinda Sveda is the first option regarding the portly Svedas. Then comes, after the Churnapinda stage is over, then a bit more, a bit more Snikta, not that too much Snikta, uh, Ruksha is Bhashpa Pinda Sveta. Bhashpa Pinda Sveta, I think it is, I have, uh, it is exclusive of Kerala. We call it as Avikiri. That it is a Churnapinda potli, it is cooked in the steam. Cooked in the, Avi means it is steam. It is the steam of medicine, medicinal kashaya and that steam cooked pottery is used for sveta. That is avikiri or bashpa pinda sveta. The Dravadravya usually use this gomutra or takra which is prabhudamla or even thanyamla is used. 
Next comes the Anyamla Pinda Sweta. This pottery, the Churna Pinda, is dipped in this Danyamla and Svetana is given. Then, later phases, we can include Jambira Pinda Sweta, where lemon is used, and Patra Pottery Sweta. I think I don't need to detail that. And later, when that Svetana, which is having a bit more Brimana, is cooked under Sweta. That is, uh, that boiled egg yolk is used in the Sweta procedure. This this Danyamla Pinda Sweda. For doing this Danyamla Pinda Sweda, as it is water based, we usually use four potlis because for fear of uh, regulating the temperature effectively, four potlis are used. It is dipped in Danyamla and then the Swetana is done. More concentration should be essentially in the lower limbs. Another uh, Anupuda yoga which is used for Churunapinda Sveda, Bhashva Sveda and all is a combination of Methika, Shadahua, Kulata, Devataru, Kola, Erendamula and Rasna mixed with uh, uh, equal amount of Saindava and Thaila. And Ubanaha is also done, uh, included in this treatment procedure. Uh, the, in spite of this classical Ubanaha which we use now is Prepare Ubanaha Dravya, double boil it, cover, it, cover the pot, and then we wrap it with that uh, foil paper, which we use to cover the food articles usually. Na? Uh, then after that, applying that Ubanaha Dravya, then keep an air and a patra over that, or in, even a rakka patra is enough, then cover it with the foil paper so that the temperature inside is regulated very nicely. It won't, this plastic won't let any temperature go out, and then use an elastic crepe bandage. Uh, because the child, kids mo won't be that mm, that friendly to the upanaha which is done regularly. Otherwise, we have see, we have observed that upanaha which is not done properly, which is not able to regulate the temperature properly, is increasing the kapavrti and actually making the disease progress. So, if you are doing upanaha, uh, I don't feel that this 12 hours or 8 hours upanaha can maintain the temperature well. So we do upanaha for only for a shorter period, like one hour, but make sure that temperature inside is maintained completely and not she that twice the. Along with this, maintaining the acne, bella and prana of the patient with rasayana drugs is included. So pipiliyadi churna, uh, narrated in the Rajakshma Chilsa, is uh, widely used. And uh, due to its palatability, it can be used with uh, uh, curries as an adjuvant. So it's usually included in the daily, daily diet. Brahma Rasayana in higher quantities, that is Anannam, that is in place of breakfast, we give a Brahma Rasayana. In higher quantities, like starting from 20 gram and up increasing, we give Brahma Rasayana as in giving very good results. Similarly, as I told earlier, Shiva Guliga, and Leshana Rasayana is also used. Leshana is used when, uh, for only for a shorter period, for fear of that Pitta Varthi in that. And again, for fear of respiratory complications, Chavana Prasha is also used. In some cases where Ama is more, Chavana Prasha Kashaya is used instead of that Lehya Kalpana. And if Dakni Deepti is well, we can in in include Chavana Prasha, Lehya. So, including rehabilitation therapies like physiotherapy, occupational therapy in that and including yoga po, yoga also in that combination with pujangasanam shalabhasanam depending upon the crisis of the child you can select the yoga postures depending upon and including pranayama and breathing exercise also in that so it's a combined package of external procedures internal medicines uh, like parental training and making the child use with that procedures and all uh, we have got very good clinical results, like controlling the progress of the disease is almost in 99 cases we are uh, getting that. And in almost 30 to 40 percent of cases, we are getting improvement in as well. So that is uh, regarding uh, the management of the DMT. Thank you. Thank you. And 
I thank the organizers for giving me a chance to present our outlook regarding the management of DMD. And thank you, audience, for the patient hearing as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for highlighting this topic. Now, by the permission of our chairperson, sir, I request our co-chairperson, Professor N. Krishnaya, sir, to give his input for this session. So I, <coughs> I know very well, our jet is at its peak function. Uh, uh, I try to uh, conclude uh, <coughs> uh, in shortly. First of all, uh, Dr. Narayan Sahane, his name must be Sahane. The, he has done excellent uh, practical work. I respect uh, the people who translate theory into the practice. And he, the, first of all, I have come to know that there is an Ayurvedic uh, urologist. There was Ayurvedic neurologist, so many things, but urologist, uh, for the first time, I have come across. And uh, the, actually, I have gone through his uh, presentation yesterday itself, because I myself uh, was a victim of his subject. But in uh, pediatric cases, uh, when come to uh, pediatric cases, urology uh, uh, cases are less when compared to the uh, <coughs> in geriatric uh, cases because it is uh, related to bladder, prostate, uh, and uh, uh, kidneys. So, but whatever he has said, first case he has presented that uh, <coughs> the neurogenic bladder, yeah. The, the neurogen, the what the thing we have to appreciate is whatever the cases we get, the in general Ayurvedic people, and we treat when the our contemporary system, so called modern system, when failed, they come to us, and then we have been uh, successful the overall uh, this period, and in future I think it will be so. So. That case, neurogenic bladder is simply <coughs> within uh, eight day, within eight sittings or within eight days. I think he got wonderful results. So this is uh, the in children. The uh, is uh, psychological attitudes attitude is very very important. And uh, the I just give uh, an example of uh, this uh, neurogenic. Uh, bladder, not only entire GIT tract, apanavata, not only apanavata, the entire GIT tract is affected by the cycle of the child. The uh, a case that uh, vomiting, the the in uh, the school going kid, um, he had vomitings at the time of going to school, and uh, the tried by everybody. Only then <coughs> I tried. I had taken entire history. And if I, I found whenever there is a school bus, then he gets uh, some cars, uh, the, some excuse he finds, and then if it is severe, then he gets vomiting. And he has undergone the, the uh, ultrasonography and uh, the advanced uh, the investigations. And they found some uh, the organic uh, uh, abnormality also. But simply I said, I just counseled, that is the reason, and they followed. Within uh, two weeks, the child stopped his vomiting. So that is, uh, he said, a neurogenic bladder. I say it is a case of neurogenic stomach. So that is the importance of the, the um, uh, uh, neurogen, uh, neurogenic or psychiatric um, problem in children, which causes such problems. And uh, uh, yes, he said, and Uttaravasti, is a very uh, important tool uh, in Ayurvedic urology. Uh, next, coming to the um, the Rakesh Sharma ji, uh, and he has spoken the yes, he has spoken uh, uh, the challenges faced in uh, Ayurvedic pediatrics. 
but I feel I felt that uh, he has spoken Swastavrutta of Kaumarvritya. The, we have to, our spe, the other subspeciality of Kaumarvritya, I feel that uh, the Swastavrutta are preventive pediatrics. But preventive, preventive pediatrics also is a very large subject, but he has spoken very length, at uh, very length. <coughs> and uh, the here, he has spoken the very, the practical cause nowadays, the breastfeeding, nutrition related to the children, the breastfeeding is delayed or breastfeeding is prematurely stopped. The main cause for the initiation of the breastfeeding is arrested because of the, the, <coughs> the surgical uh, delivery conducted. The cesarean section, the, because normal deliveries among the affluent people is very rare nowadays. If it is normal delivery supposed to be happen, it is uh, uh, done uh, cesarean section. And because cesarean section in first few days, in first week, it is extremely painful that uh, suppresses the breastfeeding. So the <clears throat> it is a very important cause of uh, the the delayed initiation of the breastfeeding. Of course, the the premature breastfeeding, even this nutritional, um, uh, initial nutritional uh, impairment causes uh, long-standing uh, abnormalities in children. So that is a spoken and uh, it's a very, very lengthy subject spoken by Rakesh Sharma. I <coughs> congratulate him. And uh, <coughs> next, uh, the Rahul Das uh, Gujarati ji, uh, the professor da, uh, da, Rahul Das Gujarati and uh, the, he found uh, that uh, the Ayurvedic principles are tricky to treat uh, respiratory problems. The Ayurvedic principles are not tricky. Ayurvedic principles have to be computed with uh, our own uh, thinking process so as to adjust uh, the Ayurvedic principles mentioned in text. They have to be tailored the to the uh, individual or it, it must be individually then I think uh, because the all other people uh, say all other um, Bhrotraya says that uh, Panchakarma is contraindicated in Bala and Urdha but uh, the Kashyap Samhita never said uh, the Panchakarma is a contraindication Panchakarma is indicated but only he modified all Panchakarmas are modified Except Virachana, all Panchakarmas uh, are uh, indicated in Ayurveda and in Kaumar Bhritya. So, <clears throat> and uh, in respiratory uh, things, uh, he said the Vamana. Vamana is contracted, uh, the two speakers are earlier the, this session also spoken the, about uh, Vamana. But uh, Vamana, according to Kaumar Bhritya neonatal management, the Vamana is the first. Panchakarma uh, done. That is Sayindavalavanam and Grutam. That induces Vamana. So that whatever the, <coughs> the aspiration that comes out, so the vomit, vomiting also causes the expectoration and from the lungs, from the stomach that comes out. That is the first Vamana. And Kashapa says that the child who vomits regularly and he is going to be healthy child in future. So, Vamana Karma is very early indicated that, uh, <coughs> that uh, aspiration into the lungs is very rare if it is done properly. And uh, we, that is what I am saying. We have to modify it, our principles according to the, uh, the, uh, the patient condition, the child's age and uh, that is mm, what we have to think. We have to compute our brain to the principles of Ayurveda. <clears throat> Next, uh, the aerosol form, because I have been in pediatrics, uh, the, the topmost uh, OPD cases are respiratory problems. So he talked about aerosol forms of uh, uh, drugs, but uh, I feel that the already aerosol forms of uh, the drug uh, administration is mentioned by Kashyapa in the form of Dupana. I think that is the best aerosol form of the uh, drug administration. Yes, there are uh, dupanaya gas, the, the useful on a respiratory system. Only the thing is, and the, the gases are the most, um, the poisonous gases are most dangerous to the, um, the respiratory system for a 
anybody. But when we use the in medicinal form, and that is the most and instant effectively uh, method of administ drug administration. And Dhupana is the entire Dhupana chapter alone is mentioned in Kashyapa Samhita. And uh, that is uh, the way of uh, uh, going ahead for the various research methods. And he has also ended with the research methods. That is what I am, the, I am just adding my own uh, way of expression in concluding remarks. So because if audience are not interested, at least uh, speakers are interested to know about my opinion. And uh, dysbiosis. He has also uh, talked about dysbiosis uh, in the respiratory problems, yes. See, in Tamakshwasa, Tamaketu Virechanam. And the in Tamakshwasa, Vamana is also indicated. See, Vamana and Virechana is the contradictory when dosha, dosha wise treatment. The <coughs> Vamana is for Kapha dosha, and Virechana is for uh, the Pitta and uh, Vata dosha. So, <coughs> but uh, the both are indicated in respiratory, common respiratory problem that is uh, allergic bronchitis in children it is called, in adults it is uh, uh, the uh, asthma or the, the tamakshwasa. So that is, yes, the, the gastrointestinal tract is very much related to the respiratory problems as well. I do agree with this. And uh, Roshni Madam, the, at the end, DMD. Really, it is a challenging problem. Still, we didn't find uh, the very uh, <coughs> effective management in DMD. And this she has taken uh, uh, such a very challenging problem. She uh, explained at uh, uh, length of the, the DMD and other uh, the biopathies. See, <coughs> myopathies are basically uh, gene mutations. In children, whatever the uh, myopathies do occur, the very rare, only temporary uh, inflammation of the muscles are very rare, but uh, they are gene mutations. And uh, once it is a gene mutation, the contemporary system of medicine, they made their ha hands up, because it is a gene, mu gene mutation cannot be changed. But uh, very simple, very simple thing is that the gene mutation means normal gene has become abnormal. There is some reason, there is a, some reason uh, to change into abnormal, abnormality of a gene. When it, the change caused normal to abnormal, why cannot be a, there is a change from abnormal to normalcy? It is, because I am speaking so confidently, some of the gene mutations, the, it is not that when you take again the <coughs> gene test that, uh, that has become normal, but 100% uh, there are few cases uh, which have come in my observations, the 100% relief was there in some of the gene mutations after giving the treatment. There is no separate treatment for gene mutations according to Ayurveda. The whatever the treatment is mentioned, the, the disease syndrome, whatever the clinical syndrome because of the uh, gene mutation, the same treatment uh, we convert into the Ayurvedic principles and then treat accordingly. Only the thing is you have to follow up for a long period for two to uh, three months or years, one or two years, then definitely there, is, there will be a change in gene function and though morphologically gene is abnormal, that functionality is changed. That means at a micro level, it is uh, uh, changed, genetic atomic level and particulate level, it is changed, function is changed and uh, that can be treated. It is, I am not speaking, they are exaggerating this because we can treat the, because they have some few examples. So that is uh, the thing and uh, whatever the Ayurvedic mm, the treatment given by Kerala, so that is the reason why it is not, uh, known as uh, Kerala Ayurveda. And uh, I appreciate their, uh, their approach uh, towards the diagnosis and management. So they base mainly based on dosha and avurta. And accordingly, she has selected panchakarma and shamana chikitsa and uh, very length. And uh, I hope that it has to be only suggestion to um, these uh, uh, gene mutations and uh, myopathies in children is to be continued to be continued the treatment, the one year are treated. Don't discourage by uh, parents and don't discourage yourself. 
because if both are there, if you continue, then there definitely there will be a change. That is my experience says. So, and at the end, I thank organizers uh, for inviting me to this only. Actually, I am not supposed to give con uh, the concluding uh, remarks, just a uh, few uh, minutes uh, before they told me. Uh, however, <coughs> so I had, I learned, still I, I am a student of Komar Vritti, I feel. So I am, a, I am attending this uh, a, a great event, I learned so much, and so for that I am grateful to the organizers of uh, uh, Rajasthan Ayurveda University. And uh, I am proud of my session because all speakers, they, they t strictly confirm to their given time, and uh, uh, thank you one and all. I congratulate all the speakers. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, sir. Now I request our guest of honor, Professor Mahesh Dikshit, sir, for his concluding remarks. Namaskar, Samay Bhot Ho Gaya Hai. Suri Nagari Ke Is Susru Sabhagar Mein Aaj Ke Is Session Ke Addaqs Adarani Hari Shankar Ji, Co-Chair Person N. Krishna Nayan Ji, Bidwan Vakta, आदरणीय वेद प्रकाश जी बड़े भाई रामवीर जी अनुज किशोरी जी प्रोफेसर रामकुमार जी और आयुर्वेद अनुरागी लोग सबसे पहले मैं आयोजकों को बहुत-बहुत आभार व्यक्त करता हूं कि उन्होंने इस तरह का प्रॉब्लम को लिया और मुझे जो कि मैं इस फील्ड का नहीं हूं मुझे आप लोगों से मुखातिब होने का अवसर दिया बहुत-बहुत उनको आभार और बहुत-बहुत बधाई देता हूं कि उन्होंने इस सफल आयोजन को संपन्न करने की तरफ बढ़ रहे हैं तो उनको बहुत-बहुत बधाई कुमार कौन एक आगाज है 2019 में प्रयास हुआ और ये द्वितीय प्रयास है मंजिल अभी दूर है मंजिल दूर यूं है कि आज के समय में जब एक तरफ कह रहे थे कि कुमार भृत्य के लिए विषय वस्तु कम मिलता है और फील्ड भी कम है ऐसे में अभी जो वक्ता थे उन्होंने चैलेंजेस बताए सच में अगर आज हम देखें तो बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है बच्चों का स्वास्थ्य बनाए रखना स्वास्थ्य संरक्षण करना और उपचार करना और आयुर्वेद में हम लोगों के पास जो संसाधन है या जो हमारा लिटरेचर है उसको युगानुरूप परिवर्तन करना जहां तक फील्ड की बात करें हम सेमिनार्स में बात करते हैं लेकिन अगर फील्ड में बात करें तो बहुत सारी समस्याएं हैं उन समस्याओं को अगर हम लोगों तक शॉल करने की व्यवस्था दें उनको कुछ ऐसा सिस्टम समझाएं क्यों कि आप देखिए कि जब मैं संस्कारों को देख रहा था 16 संस्कार में से 11 संस्कार बच्चों के लिए हैं और तीन संस्कार बच्चा होने से पहले हैं युवाओं के लिए केवल एक संस्कार है विवाह वाला और फिर अंत में एक संस्कार है जो मृत्यु के बाद में होता है अगर आप ध्यान दें कोई बिल्डिंग हम बना रहे हैं 
अब हम जब उस बिल्डिंग को चारों तरफ से बहुत सजाने को और यूं करेंगे तब तो हमें बहुत सारी चीजों की जरूरत महसूस होगी लेकिन अगर उसके पिलर्स प्रॉपर नहीं है तो आप आगे की कोई ख्वाब नहीं देख सकते इसलिए ये एक बहुत बड़ा आगाज है और इसकी सफलता हमें जब ही मिलेगी कि जब हम गर्भाधान से लेके और समावर्तन तक किशोर अवस्था तक के जो संस्कार हैं ग्यारह और तीन चौदह संस्कारों के ऊपर हम ध्यान देंगे अभी चैलेंजेस के बारे में बताया गया बहुत सारे चैलेंज बच्चे का सबसे पहला चैलेंज तो उसकी दवा लेना ही है और अगर आपने सेल्जा मैम का मैं सुन रहा था इन्होंने आर्क के ऊपर इतना बढ़िया काम किया और अभी बहुत सारे जगह पे आप अगर जो जगह जगह जो सेशन चल रहे हैं बच्चों को देने के लिए हमारे पास कुछ भी नहीं है सा फील्ड में हम कोई ले और बच्चों को औषधि भी आप तीक, बहुत तीक्ष्ण नहीं दे सकते इसलिए उनको अन्न के साथ कुछ औषध कल्पनाएँ करनी पड़ेगी बच्चे मैगी नहीं छोड़ सकते तो हमने ऐसा चैलेंज है हमारे सामने कि हम बच्चों को किस तरह से हैंडल करें उनके संस्कार किस तरह से करें आपने संस्कारों का कल एक उदाहरण देखा होगा शिवो अहम आपने एक नृत्य नाटिका सांस्कृतिक कार्यक्रम में देखी होगी और स्थिति ये हो रही है हमारे साथ बोए पेड़ बबूल का आम कांते खाए बच्चों को शुरू से गर्भाधान से लेके आगे तक के संस्कारों में हम फेल्योर जाते हैं और उसके बाद में हम उनसे कल्पना करते हैं बच्चे देश का भविष्य हैं बच्चे देश का वर्तमान हैं मैं सभी लोगों से निवेदन करूंगा कि इस विधा को बच्चों के स्वास्थ्य संरक्षण स्वास्थ्य संवर्धन और उपचार पे अपने आप को पूरी तरह से पूरी निष्ठा के साथ में जोड़ें तो मैं समझता हूँ इस कुमार कौन की जो आगाज है उसकी मंजिल के हम नज़दीक पहुँचेंगे आयोजकों को एक बार पुनः धन्यवाद जय हिंद जय भारत अरे अब तो खत्म थैंक्स लॉर्ड सर नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड गुरु जी प्रोफेसर हरिशंकर जी शर्मा सर फॉर हिज कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स
आप सब मेरे साथी हो और मैं आप सब का बंधु हूँ लेकिन ये देख रहा हूँ दूर दूर भाग रहे हैं नजदीक आने में डर लगता है क्या यहाँ बैठने में डर लगता है क्या बाहर जाओ नजदीक आओ दूर तो बैठो आप सब लोग अपने स्वास्थ्य की खुद की रक्षा करते हुए अपने देशवासी और प्रदेशवासी सभी बंधुओं की स्वास्थ्य की रक्षा करने के लिए आप लोग हम सब लोग जवाबदार हैं हमारी जवाबदारी को निभा में और ये जो मेरे जिन्हें तो बच्चों की रक्षा के लिए किसी बार फिर हम एकत्र होंगे और हम सब लोग मिलकर इस धन्यवाद गुरुजी आपके आशीर्वचनों के लिए नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर हरी सिंगल सर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी ऑफ कोमारकॉन 2023 टू गिव मोमेंटो एंड सर्टिफिकेट टू अवर रिस्पेक्टेड गुरुजी प्रोफेसर हरी शंकर जी शर्मा सर Once again, I request Dr. Harish to give memento and certificate to our guest of honor, Professor Mahesh Dikshit sir. I request Dr. Harish ji. to give memento and certificate to our co-chairperson professor n krishnaya sir now i request now i request dr ashwi sharma ji to give memento to our keynote speaker professor akesh kumar sharma ji sir Dr. Ashwi Sharma ji to give the memento to Dr. Narayan Shahani ji. I request Professor Ramkumar Bhamo ji to give the memento to Rahul Gujarati sir.
I request Dr. Amit Kataria ji to give the memento to our respected guest, <laughs> keynote speaker, Professor Roshin Anruj ji. Now I request Dr. Harish Singhal, sir, Organizing Secretary Kumar Khan 2023 to give memento and certificate to Dr. Rashmi Sharma, ma'am, coordinator, this plenary session. At the end, I would like to thank all my respected teachers present over here, all the teaching faculty members, students, and our guests from the other countries. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Now the lunch is ready. You just go and have your lunch.